Good evening out there, Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide fans. Thank you so much for tuning in to another fantastic Worlds Collide race. This one is part of our Warring Triads event that is happening right now. And tonight, we have a Doom's Rage seed to showcase for you all. In the commentary booth, I am joined by Joker Mage, uh, who will be uh, tracking our run and also providing some commentary here and there. And my friend Possum Morpheus, uh, very well known in the free enterprise community and starting to make a name for himself here in Worlds Collide. Possum, how are you? I am doing quite well. I appreciate such a kind welcome, Gar. I appreciate everything you've done for the community Worlds Collide, making it so approachable for a newbie like myself and also my good friend Tybalt uh, coming over from the Free Enterprise community as well. So stoked to see this match between Knuckly Kong and Tybalt. Going to be a great one. I think we have two very evenly matched runners here uh, doing battle to try to uh, keep their teams going. Uh, as part of the uh, the Doom Gaze and Inferno groups, I believe they are a part of, uh, doing battle here to to see who will come out victorious this week as part of this warring triad. Yeah, uh, if I can just come in real quick, uh, Dunkley Kong is Team Inferno and Tabalt is Team Doom, Doom Gaze. Uh, team Doom Gaze is already up one match, so this is the second match. So Tabalt is looking to put this away for his team, and Dunkley is looking to keep his team alive. Okay, so a lot on the line for Knuckly Kong, uh, and we'll see what he can do as far as the seed goes. So, unlock requirements for the seed. Uh, you've got six characters and nine espers that you must unlock in order to challenge Final Kefka. Uh, if you are familiar with our Ultras League, that is the same unlock requirements. However, for Doom Seeds, you only start with two characters. So, uh, can lead to some pretty uh, bumpy openings, but... In addition to that, dead checks here also reward a plethora of fantastic weapons. So if you spike uh, a nice shiny stick, uh, that can make the rest of the seed just very, very easy for you. Uh, and then for the skip, uh, for this seed in particular, looks like you need to recruit nine characters, get 12 espers, and do 25 checks. So it looks like you got a, a big, uh, a bit of a high roll there for the skip. So, uh, seems unlikely uh, here at this stage that any of our runners will get the skip, but anything can happen. Uh, finding nine characters uh, is certainly possible. Uh, 12 espers, I would say a little bit less possible, but yeah. If I'm not mistaken, Gar, isn't 9, 13, 25 the maximum for this? So we basically rolled absolute top tier you are not getting the skip for this uh for these two runners that is correct and again uh, we'll see what we'll see what the seed brings uh and if they're just going to throw character after character at us then you know so be it maybe we'll take a, a look at the, the skip there but otherwise yeah uh having to be six and nine and with our unlock requirements being so steep here it seems unlikely which is uh, going to be entertaining, honestly, honestly, because it means a little bit more Worlds Collide content for us. Uh, that means that instead of getting to do the skip and going straight to those statues, those shuffled statues, mind you, so Goddess, uh, Poltergeist, and Doom, uh, typically are going to be just shuffled, you know, from one... Uh, one statue spot to another we're going to get to see you know the boss that's hanging out in the right tower we're going to get to see you know everything all the way up through potentially even some extra dragons uh but moment of truth time who do we start out with we get minus 10 uh magic we get plus 20 vigor to everyone and we have the brothers uh royalty in the house tonight i know for me anyway i love to see in particular an edgar because he can equip a whole bunch of those big shiny sticks that we're going to be looking for. Uh, what's your thoughts on this start? Uh, I absolutely love it. Uh, the figure bros are a favorite of mine. Saban a little bit less so because his equip pool is pretty bad, but he's got a series of great checks. And then like you said, Possum, the equip pool for Edgar is phenomenal. So uh, if we see any kind of big glowing stick, guaranteed that Edgar's going to be able to equip it. And with 
the Doom settings in particular, there's an additional 50% chance that a character who would not otherwise be able to equip an item be able to equip it. So uh, very nice high powered start here. Edgar is doubly nice too, because he unlocks a 50% discount from the uh, both of the World of Balance and the World of Ruin Figaro Castle, in addition to the World of Ruin South Figaro shops. So I would anticipate both of our running runners going there and getting some uh, steeply discounted stuff out of the way. Yeah, definitely being able to take advantage of the monetary side of starting with Edgar is huge. Uh, it means that you can get your consumables quicker. And in addition to that, uh, you can also potentially get some really good deals on, you know, things like warp stones, which we already conveniently see in the store here. Even if you need some healing later, elixirs can be picked up, mega elixirs. If you can get mega elixirs for 15 or 20k a pop, that is not a bad thing at all. Uh, we see Tibalt picking up a Genji glove already. Uh, not going to be particularly useful right away, but a Genji glove can enable some pretty silly shenanigans later on with Atma weapons, Valiant knives, potentially tossing an offering there. Uh, there's a lot to be uh, to be coupled with that that Genji glove down the road. Absolutely, uh, Genji glove, uh, a bit of a supporting relic there. So right now, uh, our runners are really going to be. Uh, uh, desperate for, uh, again, those big holy swords, uh, the the Illuminas, the Ragnaroks, uh, the Atma weapons, the Valiant knives, anything, anything like that, and that's going to be fantastic for them. Uh, Knuckle Kong earlier showing us uh, a bit of tech there. There's an NPC that you can talk to in the World of Balance Narsh that will tell you how many battles it will take uh, to decurse the shield without having lock in the party. So. Uh, not uh, not useful uh, right now, but it does mean that if you pick up lock later, uh, uh, I believe the number was seven. So yeah, um, yeah, uh, definitely going to be worth investigating that curse shield. Yeah, I mean, knowing it's seven, I believe it's six to sixteen on this flag set. Seven is a real low number, very manageable, even if you get lock fairly late. Uh, that is not bad at all. An Aura Lance, uh, that is a dead check. That is honestly a pretty bad reward, uh, all things considered, with what's in the pool. But it is the best weapon that we've found so far. And Gar, as you alluded to, with a 50% uh, increase in the chance that folks can use stuff outside of their normal realm of equipables, uh, that means that there's a decent enough chance one of these two guys can use that Aura Lance. So, it, you know, it's no Illumina, it's no Ragnarok for sure, but it's something to get the party started. I actually wonder in this case with us a little bit hurting for big weapons, is there ever a chance you take this Sword Tech character, maybe put an Aura Lance on him, and try to go play in the Colosseum and try to find something shiny there? I... For these sets of flags in particular, I'm a little bit less inclined to visit the Colosseum just because of the preponderance of uh, high tier weapons that you can get. So, Aura Lance is uh, like of the of the weapons available, it's a pretty low roll. But what is interesting is that uh, Knuckly Kong did find a pair of Dragoon boots in a pot. So, uh, a, if a dragon horn shows up, well, you know, there's one character's offense already sorted out. So, uh, that being said, if you don't see anything good within the first few checks here, uh, I personally would be tempted to go and look in the Coliseum. Uh, you never know what you can find in there. Even if it's not a good weapon, it's always possible that you find uh, some good, like, defensive pieces or uh, an EXP egg or something along mm -hmm. those lines. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of things there. You could even find something like, oh, you know, swap echo screens for ice rods, maybe. And that could be what gets the, the party started for you. Knuckly Kong, uh, looks like he, he pulled a, uh, what I'll, I'll respectfully refer to as a possum here, and he forgot to put on a Moogle charm potentially here. Uh, this is a bit spooky. These guys are fairly late game enemies. And, you know, hopefully he's able to get through this, but these are these are not pleasant to run across. 
Yeah, I'm not sure if he forgot or if he's intentionally taking a grind fight in here, uh, but the Boris enemies, uh, they're not the worst. The biggest problem is that they're, like, very evasive for no real good reason. <laughs> Uh, so, you, you find these in Mount Zozo, you find them along with the Mugbear, uh, and if you're familiar with the Mugbear, uh, it is one of my favorite encounters in the entire game because uh, it's, it tries to steal your money, and if it succeeds in stealing your money and you kill it, you get like a big multiplier on that, so... Uh, if I may just cut in, uh, during my restreams with Knuckly on comms, he has mentioned that he does like to do grind fights in the basement, so I think this is indeed intentional. Well, good to yeah. know. And, well, and he didn't put the uh, he didn't put the Moogle Charm back on after that fight, so yeah, definitely intentional. Uh, personally here, I would be inclined to just go and do Imperial Camp. Uh, it's... Uh, Basically, I always open up with Imperial Camp just because it's a set of four fixed encounters uh, with no boss at the end, getting your levels up. And, uh, you know, uh, it's also got a monster in a box there, uh, which can be relevant if you're hunting for an offering. Uh, if Katana Soul shows up, uh, one, you get a bunch of money, and two, you get an offering. So. I also just uh, pop in to mention that uh, Tybalt has also found the Dragoon Boots. They were in one of the South Figaro boxes. Yeah, it looks like we also find a Pearl Rod. Uh, that is not bad at all. That is likely one free fight for our runners early on here. Uh, Pearl Rod, you know, it's it's pretty darn good to get the, the party started here, get some decent levels, maybe get through a boss check, or even a dragon that you shouldn't really have any right to get through at this stage. So we'll see if Tybalt uh, leverages that. Now I will say, I have uh, intimate experience with this enemy on, uh, on Knucklecon's <laughs> screen. Uh, these guys, while they give incredible XP, uh, they are very tanky. So this is a great fight for Knuckly to get, because it's effectively free. However, at the end of this also, it's going to use Tech Laser once you kill it, and quite possibly just remove one of Knuckly Kong's characters from getting the immense XP that it has to offer. So it's a great fight, likely, for one of his characters. Uh, but, you know, a cool thing to see if he can get through. Absolutely. Uh, on Tybalt's side, he is in World of Ruin, South Figaro. There's an offering there in the Relic Shop for 32,000 gold, so... Uh, if he finds something that is worth using, that Hawkeye there is a very interesting weapon, uh, a very overlooked weapon as well. Uh, it's the baby, the baby brother to the sniper, uh, and if you are familiar with the sniper weapon, then you know just how good it is. Uh, but Tibble opting not to buy anything, just uh, content with scouting for now. So, uh, curious to see where he goes next. Uh, I anticipate that he's going to go um, down here to, to Zen. Yep, looks like he has made his way to Zen. Knuckly Kong, meanwhile, already at level 12. Puts the Moogle Charm on, says that's enough for me for right now. Uh, did get through that Scullion relatively quickly, and no one died uh, afterwards as well, which is phenomenal for him. So two people at level 12, uh, already uh, you know, doing great on his uh, his level scaling. So fantastic to see uh, Knuckly Kong, I would say, off to a little bit of a, a level lead there. Uh, a little bit behind on shopping, but uh, he's going to have a much more comfortable time. And if he does this collapsing house that Tybalt's doing right now, we'll have a much better chance of getting through the monster in a boxes uh, and maybe being able to capitalize on what's in there. Yeah, getting through the monster in a boxes here is one of the reasons why I hesitate to do this check early. It is free. It doesn't cost you anything to do it. Uh, and so I don't necessarily, I don't hate this play from Tybalt. Uh, but I also really like uh, the fact that there are two monsters in a box here. And so I tend to come here later uh, when I have a good chance of being able to, excuse me, to, to, of being able to kill whatever's in these boxes. So uh, finding the specter here, uh, these are undead enemies so you can revivify them, you can phoenix down them. Uh, any, any number of things like that will get rid of them. So, uh, and it spits out a hyper wrist, which can be useful later on. Yeah, and just jumping with that Aura Lance already proving to be quite valuable for Tybalt there. Uh, Master Pug, this is a get out right now. Go away. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200. 
uh, it wanted nothing to do with this fight. So uh, Tybalt agreeing, uses a smoke bomb, gets out of there. Master Pug just not worth the time in almost every circumstance. If there's anything that Master P is making you good at, it's making you say, ah. Oh. <laughs> I'm just going to... Uh, sorry. If you're not familiar with the song, then uh, yeah, sorry. I'm just going to pop in. Uh, Tybalt did check the to Zen Thief in World of Rune. It's about 47,000. So 47k has not looked at it in uh, the World of Balance yet, so it is still possible to be either an Esper or an item. Uh, 47k, uh, so basically the way that Zen Thief works is that uh, it, it is like you can buy it from anywhere between 1 and 65,000 gold. So, 42,000 uh, on the expensive side. So, probably going to take a look at that in the world of balance, see if we can get a better deal on that. Uh, finding Tritalk there with Cure 3. Uh, Cure 3 in this flag set is a little bit of a trap because if you do a dragon, you get auto reflect. And with auto reflect, uh, your cure spells don't work anymore. So,. Uh, I, I would say that that's not necessarily a, a great Esper uh, to pick up right here. The Esper itself is, is actually uh, pretty good, as long as you have the MP to cast it, but uh, not teaching a whole lot of useful spells there, Possum. No, not not terribly useful. I know that, at least for me, I'm a huge fan of doing dragons. I think f I love having uh, auto-reflect. Uh, I think that it solves more problems than it causes. So uh, Cure 3 is really cool, don't get me wrong. I love being able to, to do healing, but eh. Uh, also, Sabin is a zombie on Tibalt's side. That's not great. Uh, meanwhile, on Knuckly Kong's side, we are, uh, we are going to scout a little bit uh, in the underground here, do some ancient castling. Uh, also worth noting, Knuckly Kong picked up a dragon horn. So not only was there an offering, but there was also a dragon horn available uh, in the same relic shop, which is just absolute gas on the fire here. Uh, those two relics, given that we already saw Dragoon Boots, are absolutely incredible. So we have the, the Dragoon Boot, Dragoon uh, Horn uh, combo already uh, rocking for our Aura Lance user. So that is, uh, that's end game equipment that we have in the first, you know, 10 to 12 minutes of the seed. That's beautiful for the runners. Yeah, absolutely. So Knuckle Kong gonna get off. Like, not only is he uh, up in levels at this point, uh, he's also got that uh, Dragoon Boot Dragon Horn combo. Uh, did he. Oh, uh, he may not have gotten the throne yet, so uh, he will be jumping with a, I believe that was a wing edge, so uh, not going to be the most impactful, but that's still going to be uh, a, a pretty decent damage increase over uh, what Tibble's able to do, and finding the mini master here in the tentacle spot uh, shouldn't give him too much trouble at this early stage of the seed, so... Uh, well, like overflow. overflow. Yeah. <laughs> Spooky. Overflow is uh, is a little rude. As, as long as it's not overflowing on someone with a wing edge, we're fine. Uh, if it overflows on someone with a wing edge, you get to see the really cool interaction of, oh, hey, uh, I'm charmed, and then I hit you with something with uh, an instant death attached to it, and uh, yeah, now your party has turned itself to mush. It's the same energy as uh, you're offering fixed ice character getting turned into a zombie. Mm, yes. Uh, th that is uh, one of the worst things that you can ever experience in this game. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Was it during Final Kefka Tier 2? Nah, no way. It couldn't be. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, there's Alexander. Uh, can't cure your woes in the past, but could definitely help cure some woes for Knuckly Kong in the future. Uh, Alexander's ability, not commonly seen, but uh, we'll be interested to see what it has attached to it. Uh, love finding early strength espers. Also, uh, I think finding early magic espers are pretty nice. Early speed plus espers. So we'll see what that Alexander has. Uh, we'll see if Knuckly Kong is able to... Uh, to go ahead and and show us that at some point before he goes and tackles the dragon uh, but we'll be getting his aura lance soon as well uh, while doing some shopping up here so we'll see uh and there are mega elixirs i missed those the first time around but twenty four thousand uh mega elixirs are not bad at all not not at all the the only unfortunate thing is that 
they are being sold in the world of Ruins House Figaro uh, Castle. And so, like, basically, as soon as you leave this place, you don't ever come back. So it's not likely that Knuckle Kong is going to come back to get some. So he may think it's worth it to buy some here, but instead going to buy a bunch of sleeping bags. I don't hate that either. Uh, I think that's a really good play. Yeah, I know that I, I usually like to go with about 30 sleeping bags. I think you're about the same way on that. It's just a nice comfy number to get you from start to finish your seed. And when they're half price, even better. Yeah, you might as well. Now, 56, I think, is a little bit overkill. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you know uh, I, I have seen Stranger Things. I appreciate the gumption. <laughs> <laughs> And as someone who doesn't uh, or has played vanilla exactly one time and has no idea what's actually happening, uh, I just saw Knuckly Kong loot a chest I didn't know was there and it had Star Pendant, which is not useful. Uh, Knuckly Kong also opts out of checking what was on the throne. I'm guessing that he is doing this so that the ancient castle dragon is easier and then he's going to come back and do that check on the throne after or maybe just saving it uh, altogether. That, that would be my guess. Because uh, right now, your dragon is... like It's going to be very, very soft. And you should be able to kill it. No major issues. That being said, the offense here isn't... It, it's not terrific. You do have uh, a pearl rod in the bank. Uh, but with that minus 10 magic, and with, uh, with it being as early in the game as it is, it's not going to do as much damage as you would like. Now, what is going to do a lot of damage, uh, and it's very unfortunate, is when you have people that are charmed uh, on your team and they're jumping on other people and themselves. Uh, Tybalt is potentially stuck in a bit of a loop here uh, with this Edgar who keeps trying to jump on himself, which I'm fairly certain is not an interaction that results, results in anything, nor will resolve itself. Uh, yeah, if you jump on yourself, that happens. It's nothing. So we have to hope that number 24 decides to do a melee swing, uh, but Tybalt opts to reset. So unfortunately, that's going to be a little bit of a time loss there since he has to hike back through the cave. So we'll see if he pivots to something else. Uh, Saban's checks are all really great, and I would be surprised if he didn't uh, go for one of those. So here's a red dragon. Yeah, fireball's not great, but should only do like 150 damage, yeah. Uh, plenty fine there. Sabin going to take a little bit of a punch, but Sword Tech Edgar should get us through this. Uh, 350 damage at a time. What do you think? Probably five of those or so? Oh, we got Pearl Rods. We got Poison Rods. Uh, yeah, this dragon's not long for this world. Uh, poison Rods are an interesting buy. And they are interesting specifically because of Poltergeist. You can't mm, poison a the red future dragon. Buy. Uh, like it, it, it's it's fine to do it uh, here. I would be popping a pearl rod on Knuckly Kong's side. You want to be able to get through this fight, but the dispatch does it. So uh, Edgar's going to get a bunch of levels. Saban, unfortunately, uh, going to be taking a nap, and that's not great. No, the the issue for me with that is that you're look well. Valiant knife is great though, but you're looking now at anyone who joins the party in the future is going to be sharing their levels effectively because it averages it out. So now you have a pretty big discrepancy there. Sabin's going to need to catch up, and he's also dragging future party members down. Uh, we do, however, get fixed dice as a reward, which is not bad. That's another source of damage. Uh, and while it's not a big shiny stick, it's a pretty cool thing to find. Also a cool thing to find, Brontors on uh, on Tibalt's side. But he says thanks, but no thanks. Opts out of this, and uh, that's, a, that's a lot of XP leaving off uh, the table there. But we do see Strago. That's a character that I do not like Ooh. on this flag set. But uh, yeah, here's more Brontors. Yeah, more Brontors. They are beefy, so I understand the hesitancy behind wanting to kill them. They're not particularly dangerous. They just take a while to kill. Uh, but they do offer a bunch of experience. And uh, 
uh, are generally uh, nice if you can get through them effectively. Uh, this I don't like this fight. Wo <laughs> this woolly carcass fight is okay. The woolies, or excuse me, the carcasses are undead, so uh, you can just kill them uh, you, with your your method of choice. How about being an imp? Uh, being an imp sucks, unless you have the imp <laughs> equipment. Uh, Knuckly Kong, by the way, uh, forgot to equip his Alexander Esper. The Alexander Esper does have Ice 3 on it, uh, and something else uh, that's useful. Warp, maybe? So, uh, a little bit unfortunate there. Uh, not disastrous, just because of the minus 10 magic penalty. You still probably want to learn it on, on somebody. Yeah, having Ice 3 is better than not having it. There are certain situations, especially as we know now that Strago is on the table, there is the potential that exists for a required Fanatic's Tower. If Ice 3 is the way through that, then learning it is going to be very important for our runners. So uh, thankfully there are other ways to learn it. There's a lot of other fights left on the table, still some more dragons available. So there's no shortage of magic points available to learn that Ice 3. But it would certainly be nice to, to have it sooner than later. Uh, but we do see Fixed Ice Offering on the table for Knuckly Kong already. He did buy both the Dragon Horn and the Offering. So he has a lot of those high tier relics uh, or supplementary relics, as you would say, I suppose. Uh, but they're, they're real good stuff he's got. Uh, while we see an, an imp going to war uh, berserked on Tybalt's side with this woolly uh, and a jumping Edgar berserked as well does get through that fight. Uh, is able to get quite a few levels there, thankfully, for his party. Uh, Knuckly Kong still up about uh, a half dozen levels, but is down that Strago uh, for now. We'll see if he takes the Brontors here. I would be surprised if he didn't. His offense is a lot better. He's got that offering fixed ice, uh, the, the Dragonhorn Aura Lance jumper. Uh, should be able to take him out with, with minimal issues. It looks like he's hunting a monster. Nope, no hunt for monster in a box because he's got his offering already. Makes yeah. sense. The first offering, so much better than the second. Uh, so yeah, I, I like the play. Uh, Tybalt, meanwhile, is going through the uh, the train check. Uh, ah, he's seeking out the recovery spring for healing there and then going to go back to the, the correct path. Uh, to make his way to the train. This is a cool check uh, insofar as it's peekable. So if it turns out to be a Zonk, uh, you know, you can know that ahead of time. If it's a character, you can add them to the party. If it's an Esper, you get them. Uh, so it's a, a nice check in my book. I, I love to see this. An Ice Shield, it's okay. I, I don't know that I'd do this check for an Ice Shield, though. Yeah, no, that, uh, I, I like Ice Shield. Uh, it's useful uh, throughout the entire seed not worth the uh, roughly three minutes or so it's going to take for Tibble to get through this check. Yeah, if if we hadn't already seen the offering in a shop, maybe you do this for the monster in a box as well. But I think having already known where that, uh, that offering is, I, I just don't see the allure of this. Yeah. Waterfall's right there. Um, you know, you don't necessarily want to do Epic Rock, Burning House, Fanatics Tower, anything like that. But um, there are there's other checks that are available. Uh, so it's a little bit surprising. And there go yeah. the Brontors, 3600 3, XP. Uh, and it was a warp. I, I, I did see that correctly. Okay, cool. So it uh, gets through the Brontors. I imagine is not going to have an issue at all with the woolly carcass fight here. Uh, the pincer well... <laughs> might, might might make that uh, a little different, but hey. Well, uh, now we just have a berserk fixed ice offering thrower, so even better. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I do believe berserk works with uh, with fixed ice, so. <laughs> and uh, those rolls, my goodness. Yep, big, big rolls. <laughs> you love to see it. Apparently, Berserk just increases your die roll by like one or two for, for every single die thrown. Uh, so that's cool. <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely uh, self-Zerk my characters with fixed dice from here on out. Thank you for teaching me that, Knuckly Kong. Absolutely. That's not how that works. <laughs> At all. Uh, oh, Tibble Warp Stoning out of the uh, the PM Stalker encounter there. I'm not sure if I agree with that. 
The PM Stalkers are, they're very easy to kill. They give you uh, a decent chunk of experience and gold. Uh, would really, would have liked to have seen him uh, uh, take those, uh, take that encounter there just to, just for more levels. Uh, yeah, the, the PM Stalkers give a surprising amount of XP for how easy they are. Uh, like at base level, they have 60 health or something like that. With a sap effect already on them, uh, they're shockingly easy to dispatch. And the XP is well worth it. So yeah, a little surprised to see a, a nope out of that. We are greeted with an octopus, though. Uh, I don't know which form this is because I'm bad at this game. But Gar, I'm sure you can tell us. <laughs> uh, my, my guess is that this is Ultros 2. Uh, As... it, it, it's hard to say. Uh, because like this, this, uh, this spot here is one of the only spots where, uh, this is not a, a pincer attack from the party. Yeah, that makes sense because it is, uh, it's scripted back attack for the train and we see, well, ultra is uh, now okay, this diving is, down. Uh, That's one, right? No, this is ultras too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Strago has uh, stunned himself. Well done, sir. But you're no longer confused. You're just stopped. And I, now you're stopped, <laughs> and I'm not sure which one's worse at this point in time. Also, love seeing Edgar jumping backwards. Uh, that's <laughs> real fun. <laughs> it's it's a good time. Big confused energy all around on uh, on Tibalt's side. Uh, this ultra is giving him a little bit of a hard time. That's unfortunate. Uh, the next jump should kill it, but uh, he, <laughs> the he next is reverse jump. to be a little rude. And then, yeah, here's an Imp Song. I figured this was coming. I mean, Imp Song is better than Confused Song or, uh, you know, uh, other things. So that jump did not do it, though, this Ultros. Wow, uh, he is thicker than I thought. Indeed, at, with two C's. <laughs> yeah. We have chat suggesting they would have gone to Fabul here. I, I don't think chat is playing the correct game, but I appreciate it. Uh, Knuckly Kong Ooh, finding a random economizer. Uh, for me on this flag set, that is like 25 to 30k cash. And uh, I'm appreciative of it showing up. But yeah, it's gone. Uh, it looks like we are still doing battle with this Ultra, so... Knuckly Kong opting not to take the monster in a box here on the train, but interestingly enough, also is taking the fight on the train here for the ice shield. Yeah, and I, I really, I, I, I don't think that this is the right play. Um, this Ultros is still alive. <laughs> I, I, I am honestly kind of shocked. Tibble's uh, got to have three thousand damage into this sucker by now, right? Yeah, and, and Ultras 2 does not have that much HP base. There it goes. Finally. Well, but, meanwhile, but, Knuckly like, Kong. Knuckly Kong is just going to one-shot this guy. Is it possible this was Ultras 3? No, this is, this is definitely Ultras 2. Yeah, very Ultras odd. Ultras 3 uh, does not cast Imp Song. <laughs> uh, and Ultras 2 does. But this is where, I mean, technically speaking, I, I think... Tibalt was maybe in consideration for being ahead, but I mean Knuckly's offense. Th no. There's no question right now that like Knuckly just passed Tibalt and then some because he's just so so much stronger with yeah. the, the offense he has. Knuckly Kong is cooking with gas and Tibalt uh is not. <laughs> Yeah, like Tibalt knows where the offering is, he knows where the dragon horn is, and just hasn't purchased them. And that is uh, something that he's he's going to need to get them sooner than later. The fixed dice, uh, you know, those are from that ancient cave check, and Tibalt unfortunately did not get through the tentacles, so did not get through the the ancient cave or ancient castle, excuse me. Uh, but Knuckly Kong continuing to get gargantuan rolls off these dice. Uh, I would love to go to Knuckly Kong's school of dice throwing. I say that and he rolls two horrible things. But he put it's out you know, 5,000 5, on that second uh, attack alone. So uh, Knuckly Kong's offering fixed dice just carrying here. Uh, in and out of that fight, Timbal's going to be here for a substantial amount of time by comparison. 
Absolutely. Uh, the other thing, too, is that there was a Valiant knife that dropped from the, I believe it was the Dragon. So, uh, again, with those 50% equip pools, it's possible that somebody has uh, the ability to equip the Valiant knife, and that's one of the uh, best, uh, best weapons in the entire game. So, and there's another set of fixed dice. So, in theory, if Knuckle Kong wanted to, he could equip that Genji glove uh, yeah. to, to Saban and uh, just, just, just go to the casino. Yeah, I mean, if you go to the casino eight times, you're almost certainly going to hit on at least one of them. So, uh, it's one of those situations where for Knuckly, just roll the dice, man, and uh, and see where where fate takes you. Fate taking him right now to Ebbets Rock makes a lot of sense. I believe our checks remaining are Ebbets Rock, Burning House, Fanatics Tower, and Kefka at Narsh, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, there's plenty more. There's well, I see plenty more. You've got uh, like, Mount Colts. So, Mount Colts. Yeah, that's yeah. the only other one. But nothing on getting very lucky too with these coral drops. Uh, I believe that was uh, five uh, twice in a row, which is very good. Um, uh, also, uh, chat pointing out that Knuckly uh, uh, has, has been using our mentor program, uh, which is designed to help newer players get like a, a bit of a jump start in this uh, in, in, the, in this randomizer. So, uh, if you are so inclined, uh, please, please join our Discord, uh, join our mentor program. We are happy to help you. Uh, in fact, we would we would relish the opportunity. Yeah, the mentors are incredible. Uh, my co-commentator this evening, Gar, uh, one of those, uh, as you know, who has been instrumental to so many people, uh, you know, doing well in this community. Uh, while I haven't officially been mentored by anyone, Gar has hung out in a lot of my streams and taught a ton to me about this game. So uh, even if it's not officially as part of the mentor program. Folks in this community are wonderful about just hanging out. If you're streaming this game, people are going to show up. You know, it's, it's that whole, if you uh, if you play the game or if you build the field, they will come. Uh, it's exactly. the same type of deal uh, with Worlds Collide. Uh, if you have characters in multiples of five for their levels, Doomgaze will show up and ruin your day. But Knuckly Kong dodges disaster. No level five Doom for him, uh, throw the pearl rod. That's almost 6k damage there. And now it's time to let the dice fly. That's another Big 5 rolls. 4 4. 5 4 2. Okay, 1 1 5 is bad, but getting some real good rolls wow, there. Oh, look at that. All right. <laughs> Knuckly. Knuckly Kong. I am also going to need to, to come to your school <laughs> on how to roll dice. So that's fantastic. I, Getting Doom Gaze out of the way early like that is is always a relief. A little bit anxiety inducing because, uh, I mean, you're not often checking your levels, right? So as soon as level five uh, uh, Doom comes out, you're like, okay, well, do I pass the math class or not? And there goes the Genji Glove offering double fixed dice. So here is something that becomes a little interesting. Uh, that was Epic's Rock. That was another character check, uh, potentially, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and we now have Burning House. We have Fanatic's Tower. We have Mount Colts. Uh, looks like we're going to the Burning House first. Uh, meanwhile, it took Tibalt four minutes, roughly, to get through that uh, Shiva and Ifrit. Does so with Edgar, uh, where Knuckly Kong was through that fight in about 30 seconds. So a huge time pickup there. Uh, Knuckly Kong able to get through the entirety of Ebbets Rock and the Waterfall, basically, in the time that Tibalt got through the Waterfall. So that a lead that is building just based on the power available uh, is Good. huge. Now that said, Tibalt finally going to get a set of fixed dice here. Will that be enough for him to go back and buy the offering and really start to leverage that? About another ice shield for for Knuckly Kong. The snowball just keeps rolling. Makes the train a, a question. Works, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's up, Joker? Uh, at this point, would you have gone to at least peak the Fanatics Tower reward because that is peakable, right? It is peakable. Um, the magic situation uh, in this seed and in Doom seeds in general, it like it's just miserable. It's really bad. Uh, Ice three is available, and Knuckle Kong 
Uh, I'm not sure if he learned it yet, but in theory, he could do Fanatic's Tower and not have it be awful. But, like, it is basically the last location that I would visit at this point. It's just, it's such a slog with the, the minus 10 magic uh, to get through. Yeah, I might consider it over Kefka and Narsh, but that would be the only thing I'd consider it over. And it would just be a proximity thing. Uh, but, yeah, on Knuckly's side, he's just going to continue to stay ahead of scaling as well. Uh, just keep grinding up those levels. Done a great job of it so far. Uh, those Brontors certainly helping as well. Uh, but he's also going to make a lot quicker work of uh, this burning house, I think, than Tybalt will. Just that... Uh, that sheer advantage of having that double fixed ice offering Genji Glove, whereas Timalt is rocking single fixed ice, no offering. Uh, so, you know, was kind of hoping for Timalt's side uh, just to make things easier for him that he would be on his way to pick up that offering, but doesn't look like he's going to do so yet. I do like this play from Timalt, though. He recognizes that his characters are uh, pretty low level, with the exception of Edgar, so. Going into Burning House to take the fights here, uh, I, I think that's a I think that's a good play. But yeah, like you For said, Possum, sure. it's just it's really unfortunate that he does like he didn't go and buy uh, an offering when he was at World of Ruins of Figaro. And at this point, I wonder, like, did he forget about it? Maybe, uh, but with him also getting out of the the trap chest or the monster in a box, excuse me, and. Uh, in the train my thought is with him hunting those that he might be looking for a free one instead of having to spend the money on it so it, it could just be a thing where he's you know trying to save a little bit of cash for other things but in my mind you know an offering is one of the best things that money can buy in a flag set built around hitting things so uh you know it's and, and it, it'll be interesting to find out yeah, and I mean, like, when you can get it at, at half price, like, it, it, it's way too tempting to pass up. So, uh, and unfortunately, Tibble's going to get to the point, too, where uh, Katana Soul is, is going to become unreasonable to deal with because of the scaling. Uh, yeah. It is 2.5 uh, per check. So, yeah, like, both of our runners have to be careful, but Knuckly Kong. Knuckle Kong is probably going to be able to get through basically everything, at least for the, the short term. Now, things are going to start oh. doing a bunch of damage. Uh, I, this is uh, a totally fine fight, I think. For Knuckly, this is a totally fine fight. Yeah, for, for, <laughs> for Tibble. Hmm. Uh, Knuckly has eight chances at glory here. Now, he may need all eight of them because the, die, the dice yeah, are the, not cooperating this fight. Uh, but... It's one of those things where Knuckly is probably going to two-shot this with the die rolls. Tybalt is going to be here dispatching a lot. Uh, this, yeah, Sortec 4 may be better than Dispatch here, uh, but it tough to say. Bit. And Kaven on Knuckly Kong's side, that's a little spooky. Uh, but Edgar does live, so that's good. And here comes the second wave of dice. That's this a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, th this is Knuckly Kong out of here for sure. The dice came to play the second round. Boy, did they. This is... Oh, my goodness, yeah. Like 25,000 damage pumped into this Ro Admiral. Roll weapon. them bones, <laughs> Saban. Let's go. Setzer would be jealous. And there it goes. So, uh, a good fight for Knuckly Kong. Uh, gonna get... Uh, wait. Yes, gonna get an elixir out of this, too. And... Uh, Item healing in this seat, uh, or in this black set in particular, is is always like just fantastic. So, uh, and it is a character, uh, so this is good. It means that we stave off the uh, the the horrible uh, fanatics tower, at least for now. I was gonna say until it shows up as Gogo -Go and the one check is a zonk and yeah, you're back <laughs> to square square one again. But no, it's Celis that gives us a number of checks. Uh, Magitech Factory uh, giving a potential three for one with a character. Uh, the Opera House check can have a character. The Celis Cell check can have a character. So all of her checks can have characters at them. So very likely that Celis is our gating progression. Uh, also, Tybalt able to get through that Atma weapon much faster than I anticipated. So kudos to him. Uh, yeah. Not losing much time at all to Knuckly Kong, who, uh, you know, again, has just an overwhelming power 
uh, discrepancy here. Uh, but we'll see if Tibal can can keep uh, you know hot on his heels. Uh, he is down the the Edgar checks, but uh, you know maybe he can uh, work around that with some uh, Celis magic. That just goes to show you the power of the scaling in this flag set because Tibble uh, Tibble is one in four uh, without a dragon, and Nuckle Kong was uh, or excuse me, he was one in three. Uh, and Nuckle Kong was two and three with the dragon, so. Uh, like a, a very wide discrepancy here. Also, uh, a very big thing to note is that Celeste has rage. And in this flag set, I believe that your starting rages are like you have a lot of them. So it's entirely possible that you get one of the good physical ones, like uh, Stray Cat, obviously, the creme de la creme, but uh, even something like Gold Bear or the Bogey. Uh, oh, that is a very good Esper, too. Uh, something like Gold Bear or Bogey would be uh, just fantastic, uh, especially with offerings available to buy right here. Uh, I I would be very tempted to just blind buy an offering and then just hope that uh, mm -hmm. ho hope that you, you get something good because the odds are odds are pretty good. No, I also happened to see in a shop that Tibalt was just in. Uh... He saw a ca cat hood in there, along with thunder shields, I believe. Uh, cat hood would have been very intriguing for me as well uh, to pick up. It's a very good piece of gear all on its own. Plus, you get a ton of gold from everything else you fight uh, with the Magitech factory and the uh, Opera House both having random encounters. That cat hood is probably paying for itself by the end of a single check. So that would have been something I would have considered picking up as well. Uh, it just I love a cat hood, probably uh, you know irrationally so, but a uh, really good piece of gear. Oh, well, you gotta remember the ABCs, possum. Always buy cat hood. Ah, I didn't know that was a thing, but now I know it's a thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, a little bit of like hidden worlds collide knowledge that I just made up. Ah, I like it. Knowledge, whether it be real or, or irre irrational, surreal, whatever you would choose, <laughs> mathematic terms or, or types of paints. Uh, but either way, here we go. Uh, Tibal going to uh, buy an Esper potentially for 50,000 gold. Ooh, that's, uh, that's not happening. Not. Uh, and Kong going to show us what the, the collapsing... Oh, no, we already saw what the collapsing house gives. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to get a little bit of check parity there. Uh, Tibalt is going to do some shopping, though, selling off some of these lesser uh, used items. And we'll see what he is opting to purchase here. Or if he's trying to save up to buy the uh, the $50,000 mystery item. Uh, my guess is that he is buying the $50,000 item. So uh, I believe it was a glowing stone. So. Yeah, so I'm uh, going to pick up the Ifrit there. And we'll see if we can get uh, Nuckly Kong stream back. Looks like we're having a slight bit of technical difficulties, uh, but uh, you know, rest assured we will have Nuckly Kong back as soon as we can. Uh, for the meanwhile, we will just stick with, uh, with Tibalt and uh, you know, go from there. Looks like, was that a Magic 2 Esper? Mag 2 with Cure 3 and Ice 3. Uh, mm. Again, Cure 3, not terribly special, but the Mag 2 with Ice 3 on it does make magic, uh, like, it, it makes it more of a presence here. So not a bad pickup at all. Uh, and Nuckly Kong, I believe, has that as well. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Tibble just going to go ahead and jump immediately to, uh, uh, to Magitech uh, Factory. And, uh, yeah, we'll see... We'll see what lies in wait here. Only the last check can reward a character. So I think that's what uh, what he's going to be going for here, or what he's going to be hoping for, uh, because otherwise that may potentially mean a trip into the Opera House, and that is not the quickest of checks. So, And thank you, by the way. That was very nice. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I will say the, uh, the Opera House for Tybalt, is probably a lot more alluring than it would be for Knuckly Kong. Because Tybalt, I think, is still a little bit wonky on scaling. Uh, a couple extra encounters would do him some good. Because uh, he's going to be, by the end of this Magitech series, he's going to be at potentially like, you know, 5-5 five, five, uh, on, you know, Espers and uh, characters. And his scaling is not to where he would really want it. 
Uh, nor is his weaponry. Like, yes, he has fixed dice, but he's missing an offering. Yes, he has a jumper, but he's missing a horn to go with it. So for Tybalt, those extra encounters could still have some merit. On Knuckly Kong's side, uh, I can see not wanting to touch Opera House at all. Uh, we do see Knuckly Kong also heading into uh, Magitech Factory, uh, and we'll see if we can get a, a stable stream coming up on his end to show us where in the Magitech Factory he is. But for now, we see a Vargas hanging out with a couple of friendly neighborhood bears they're basically yogi the bear uh they want to have a picnic with you unfortunately that picnic usually ends in them trying to eat you and that's less fun than it should be i'm getting a peek at the rages here uh so there's carcass Dodie. uh and there's gold bear so uh gold bear retainer uh, with with the levels that you get uh from from all of the Warring Triad Seeds, normally you wind up uh, in the low to mid 40s by the time that you're ready to go uh, to final Kefka. Uh, and so for any physical damage dealer, what's important to note is that your level gets factored in twice. Uh, Gold Bear, uh, the special move there is that uh, it can do uh, a physical attack that is uh, 2.5 times the power. So, with an offering, with a Genji Glove, uh, th it is capable of doing just incredible amounts of damage. If you ever want a one-shot final Kefka, that's a great way to do it. Yeah, it's not Stray Cat, but it's basically Stray Cat. <laughs> and, and um, you will come very close to maxing out uh, your damage, especially if you wind up picking up, like, dice, uh, or excuse me, if Celeste can use the fixed dice, or uh, uh, that Hawkeye that was available in mm -hmm. one of the, the Figaro's, I forget which. I think it was World of Ruin. Uh, but Tibble, uh gonna be able to get through this Vargas fight just fine. Uh, Vargas does have a bunch of HP because you're intended to uh, use the Pummel Blitz on him. Uh, that is basically uh, the Vanilla Games tutorial on the Blitz command. So he has a bunch of HP uh, and is just programmed to die when he gets blitzed. Uh, so it takes a little bit to take him out, but Tibble does it, no problem. Yeah, and used the Retainer Rage with Celis there, which was uh, casting Shock. Uh, there was also Carcass there, which cast Lit 3. A couple other decent ones in there. We get Tarato. Uh, I'll see what's on that Esper. And uh, get some sleeping bags to heal up. While Knuckly Kong uh, is probably still somewhere in Magitech Factory at an unknown location. Uh, who knows what's actually going on. Doom Muddle HP 100. Love to see the HP 100. Uh, that's fantastic. Doom is okay as well, but that HP 100, real, real enticing when we know there's Valiant, at least one Valiant Knife floating around. Tybalt doesn't have it, but it's out there. As long as Knuckly Kong can use it, uh, or has a character that can use it, in yeah. the vanilla game, it's only Locke, but here, uh, it's possible that somebody else can, so... I'm just uh, want to pop in. Uh, Knuckly stream is still off but while i was on i briefly saw that he did have four magicite and four characters he did not have to zen thief lit up on his tracker so i'm not sure exactly where all those came from uh but that's where he was last time i was able to see it okay yeah, well thank you uh, yeah thanks for the update uh hopefully we can get him back pretty soon uh in the meantime this is a very very rude fight uh yep. of that. <laughs> Uh, this is also interesting, though. Um, Tybalt used a retainer uh, for the shock where it could have been done as Carcass, which I believe is lit three. So that would have potentially, uh, if he was lucky, been able to one-shot this fight. Uh, so we'll see if Tybalt regroups. It is possible. I know Tybalt is a, a newer runner to this. He has uh, you know, kind of migrated over uh, with a, a number of, of folks uh, who I know from Free Enterprise, Two Worlds Collide, and just simply may not know the rage list yet. So it is, uh, you know, quite possible that he just, he is unaware that Carcass is lit three and would be very helpful here. Uh, Knuckly Kong, meanwhile, we do see is past Tybalt in the Magitech factory. He's to the random encounter portion of things. Uh, so we know that he did make it past that Air Force 
uh, encounter that Air Force boss, and he is on his way towards whatever the next boss is going to be. Tybalt opts to leave the Magitech factory, uh, takes that one uh, Magisite, I believe, that he got, and he is going to be on his way to his next destination. Yeah, uh, Tybalt here looking a little bit flustered uh and at this point it's kind of it's kind of hard to blame him uh it, like that that air force was uh like it, it is always a rude boss but especially later on because all three of the parts can do some really nasty things to you later on uh you know every single piece can cast shrapnel uh, they can all cast wave cannon and if you can't protect effectively against it you just die right so yeah I do have some bad news with that. Um, he actually reset out of the entire Magic Tech factory, so lost that Esper from the basement or uh, cellar, the, the the Crusher room. Oh, yes, got indeed. It. So, uh, gonna gonna pivot here. Gonna head to the opera. Uh, now, if this is a character, uh, it is possible for Tibble to uh, to to climb uh, his way back into this. Especially if it's one that has a, a fantastic ability like throw. Yeah, if it's like a realm with throw, for example, would be real nice because you have that increased magic off the start, which can help with uh, with the edges, you know, fire schemes, bolt edges, water edges, things like that. Uh, and then you can just try to stack whatever strength is available on her as well, or just, you know, get levels. Uh, and then things like shurikens, ninja stars, and all that become a lot better. Uh, but it, it's going to take something like that to, to get Tibalt back in this. Uh, a Cyan could help as well, give him access to Dome of Dream and then get Sword Tech fully online. Uh, there is, uh, there's few things as cool as Sword Tech 7 in, uh, in this here video game. Uh, big, big fan of, uh, of Sword Tech 7. The fact that it is basically going to ignore defense, uh, it's non elemental, uh, you know, as long as I, I don't think it takes the, the weapon element into account anyway, it's just based on the, the power of the weapon. Correct. But it, it's, it's, uh, not it's even incredibly that. strong. Uh, so uh, it doesn't even factor in your weapon damage unless that weapon increases your vigor. Gotcha. Uh, you will do the same damage with a Dirk as you would with a Skyrinder. Well, there you go. That's why you are one of the best in the business car. Thank you. Uh, okay, so we have Nukli Kong back for the time being, it looks like. Uh, unfortunately, we do not get to see what he fought at the end of the minecart ride. It doesn't look like it was too big of a challenge for him, so... Uh, and it is uh, a Siren Esper, which is a fantastic pickup. Uh, it's going to be able to set mute for him. And uh, how about a French Vanilla, number 128? Normally you fight this at the end. Of the minecart ride but here uh he decided to get some fresh air i will say uh that as far as mute is concerned on this particular flag set especially because we've already got auto reflect from doing one one dragon siren is kind of eh. uh in almost any other flag set, you'd be like yo sign me up i want siren for tier two of final kefka when you have reflect up already it kind of doesn't do much it's a cool esper to have and i hope it's got some neat stuff on it but this flag set has really taught me to just not care about siren uh, for the first time ever playing worlds collide uh it, it saves a bunch of time and i think that's the biggest draw to it because uh like it, reflect will help you uh against like tier two's magic but uh, it does not save you from the animation time in fact it just makes it longer because now you have to factor and reflect into into things, but uh, having magic not cast anything at all, uh, it's just a huge time save. Uh, especially once you get him under ten thousand HP, uh, and he starts countering everything with uh, quarter and mm -hmm. dispel and all these other things that take ten million years to to, to resolve. That's fair, and after all, we are speed running. Uh, uh, tip alt speed running octopus percent. Uh, uh, this, this is this is also kind of French vanilla. This is Ultras One. Now this is going to be pretty thick, all things considered, at this point. Uh, but it is stopped, so Tibalt hopefully can get some decent die rolls here, uh, get a decent rage going. Looks like we're casting Flare as well. 
so hopefully is able to get through this Ultros fairly quickly. While Knuckly Kong making his way over to Mount Colts, uh, a check I know a lot of people dislike doing. Uh, and as a result, I love doing it. So I am on board for the Mount Colts check by Knuckly Kong here. I, I really like Mount Colts, uh, and honestly, I'm not sure why I don't spring for it earlier. It is a fair bit of walking, but uh, it, it, like, it's not bad at all. I think uh, the best theory that I heard about that was that like it, this place takes forever in the vanilla game because uh, there's just so many encounters. Uh, but here, it's just a walkathon. I I think of it as Zozo without a dragon. Uh, you know, the Cyan uh, Mount Zozo check. And so that's just kind of how I view it. Uh, looks like Kibalt just getting a Pearl Lance. That is not what you want to see if you are a fan of uh, uh, of Tibalt and uh, and Team Doomgaze here. Yeah, and unfortunately, I think that's going to put this away uh, for Tibalt. I think that at this point, he's just a little bit too far behind. Uh, and Knuckly Kong... He got the early power and was just able to snowball it from there. So now anything can happen. The statues are very, very deadly. So Knuckly can just uh, fold over enough times and Tybalt can pick up enough stuff along the way. But... Yeah, I mean, Tybalt going to, to need to make up the entirety of Magitek Factory the entirety of Ancient Castle, plus the engine room. I mean, we're talking a half dozen checks here. Uh, meanwhile, Knuckly Kong, uh, those dice just getting lodged into Welk's head over and over and over, and the shell, too, for good measure. Yeah, uh, I think Just, you know, dead. tens of thousands of damage pouring out here in excess of what actually needs to be done. Uh, you know, not quickly dispatching uh, the Welk, but definitely uh, dispatching it nonetheless, uh, as that was supreme overkill. It, uh, yeah, it's good enough. Uh, Celeste, I do believe, also capable of wearing that Valiant Knife. So, Knuckly Kong looks like he's not even going to worry about raging or anything, just uh, gonna gonna swing that Valiant Knife. Presumably at some point he'll revisit World of Ruins off Figaro and pick up another offering for her, but mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, yeah. And this does beget an interesting question that if you are opting to use an, you know, an offering and a Valiant Knife, uh, do you at any point think about all five dragons so that you can keep your Valiant Knife user safe? Or do you simply just say, well, I'll keep them at full health when they're at full health, and then as they get damaged, they simply do more, and I hope they don't die. Uh, that'll be an interesting thing to see for Knuckly as well. Uh, I do know that Life 3 goes through Reflect, so that is a way kind of around it as a safety net, but it does make things like 10 hits from Tier 2 of Final Kefka spooky. Tier 3 can be a little spooky, so uh, be real interesting. It would be interesting. Uh, I would say that with an HP plus 100 Esper, um, you can get up to realistically uh, six to 7,000 HP. Uh, which is way more than you could ever possibly need. Uh, so, yeah, yeah like, yeah, I don't like I, Knuckly Kong is, is just set at this point, right? It's yeah. Uh, you get an offering, you get Celeste a bunch of HP, uh, and you, you throw dice, you swing with with the knives. Uh, ain't nothing to it but to do it. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe at this point we've seen all the checks except Fanatic's Tower and Kefka and Narsh. That is correct. Yeah, so uh, again, really hoping that it's not Fanatic's Tower, although I think that Knuckly Kong is... Well, I, I think that Knuckly Kong can do it, but uh, again, magic, even with that magic plus two Esper, it's still not fantastic. So, gonna hope that it's a Kefka Narsh. Yeah, uh, as someone who has uh, experienced two practice seeds with required Fanatics Tower today alone, uh, I hope for our runners that that is not the case for them. Uh, as even with a level 3 magic or the availability of rods somewhere, it's still not fun. Uh, and I, you know, I know that we have the option of Berserk. However, uh, for Knuckly Kong, he's done a dragon, so Berserk becomes a lot harder. Uh, I don't believe Berserk goes through uh, through walls, uh, 
So that's going to, to pose a challenge. Tibalt might actually, as a result, be better set up for that if that's what it comes to. Uh, but we shall see uh, if, in fact, that happens. Is Tibalt is going to be presented with the opportunity to take on a dragon very, very shortly. Ooh. Uh, Ultros hates muscle heads. Uh, that tentacle, now you see the power of the scaling here, because now things like tentacle, which are normally very deadly, uh, now they're just, you know, they will wreck your entire party if, if, if he chooses to multi-target that. Yeah, 12, uh, 12 checks in now, you know, 13 checks after this. Uh, that's going to be, you know, scaling equivalent to what, level 30-ish? And I want to say Knuckly's like level 35. So, you know, not all that far ahead of scaling uh, at this point anyway. Uh, my math might be a little fuzzy on that because I am uh, not a math major, uh, nor uh, nor someone who cares to do math on stream. But we do have equalized pearl lances here, uh, so Nuklikon gonna be able to show us what he wants to do next. And it looks like next is Kefka at Narsh. Uh, I am wondering if we're gonna see a save outside here and a reset. Nope, we're just gonna head gonna straight jam. in. Uh, yeah. Just to uh, confirm real quick, uh, according to his tracker, Nuckley is on 16 checks. 16, and uh, at, at two and a half. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's 40. Scaling, yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, he would actually be behind it then. I think he's in like the mid to high 30s. Uh, Tibble opting to reset out of... Uh, pugs. I'm not sure which of the chests that he opened. I think it was the one in uh, Ancient Castle proper. Yeah, don't hate it. I mean, a Minerva would be real nice because we have Celis, but they're going to take a long time to get through. Uh, and, you know, Tibalt knows that he needs to make... I, I assume he would know he needs to make up time. Uh, well, you know, we can call that a character... Uh, that's I mean, that's Gogo, -Go. <laughs> and I mean, like it, it is extremely likely that Gogo's check just leads to another character. So now the the real awkward part is if it doesn't, uh, because then that means the gate is on, and the gate is at Fanatic's tower, and everybody is sad. Uh, you know, but Gogo -Go is a character; it does present a very linear option to progression. Uh, but sometimes that's what it boils down to. Tibalt gets the fixed dice that gives him double fixed dice. He's got a Genji glove, so he's a, you know no offering, and that that makes a very big difference. Uh, Nugly Kong unable to get the skip here on the encounters, unfortunately for him. So we're going to show us some Rainmen and Samurais, uh, and uh, promptly use smoke bombs. Tibalt, meanwhile, using the Retainer Shock against the Red Dragon. And uh, going to be going to town here with some sword tech, some fixed ice. And uh, that's also going to present a potential issue for Fanatic's Tower Berserking as well. Uh, if we end up uh, having to go that route, if Gogo's check does not pay out with a character chain. It's unfortunate to, uh, well, potentially unfortunate for Tibble because his scaling is such that the Red Dragon can cast all kinds of nasty things. Uh, Fire 3, I do believe, is on the table, so... Uh, Flare Star, Flare. as we just saw. Flare Star <laughs> is, is, is nasty, but it's actually like not as deadly as you would think because uh, of the way that it deals damage. Uh, where basically it targets a party member, uh, it, it's uh, some, some multiple of that character's level, and then it's split across every target. So, on a single target, it is deadly. Across four targets, uh, you can generally live. Which is good, because generally living is better than the alternative. Oh, yeah, 100%. And Nuka Kong finally getting through uh, those encounters. Finds a Dolahan up here. Uh, gonna get this pearl reflected. Uh, sad times for our horse boy. Yeah, tons of HP on Dullahan. Always surprises me when I've dealt like a billion damage to Dullahan and it's still alive. That being said, uh, Dullahan, as well as every other enemy in this game so far for Nuckly Kong, is weak to eight instances of fixed dice. And uh, here we go. Uh, you know, just just roll them bones. Now roll the bones. You might as well like the, again. 
this seed is over for, for <laughs> Nuckley Kong. There is nothing else that he can do other than purchase another offering for Celeste. Uh, and, uh, well... <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, here we go. Dolahan's still alive. Eight, Close eight to dice death. Yeah, and jump. Three there. Uh, and a hit from a VK. So, yeah. Uh, lots of HP. We see the, the, the little known reflect spell coming out. <laughs> uh, never have I seen this more uh, than in, uh, in, in Doom Seeds. Uh, and if you don't know, it sets, uh, what it's like blind, is it blind, mute, and slow, I think? On I, any I know target that, that's, that's covered with reflect? Yeah, blind for sure is there because I was like, uh, I found that out today. How, how, you know, what is this that's happening? Uh, and it was, oh, you know, there's a, uh, there's blind being cast. And oh boy, uh, Tybalt has found, uh, well, a thing that exists. And the issue with this thing that exists that he found is uh it's katana soul so he, he found you know the potential offering the problem is he went into this unhealed uh did he save is my other question because uh boy i hope he saved i yeah i hope so he can run it, like it would break his heart uh to to smoke bomb this and so he's not going to he is going to die <laughs> I hope he didn't lose the dragon and the the other check here. And the instant end goal there from for Knuckly Kong, so it, good you know you love to see it. Unless you're a Tybalt fan, in which case you hate to see it. <laughs> uh, I mean that's that's great though for a Knuckly Kong. It's very annoying when you get demied and demied and demied and Demied and oh, uh, Demied, uh, and there's like five or six Demies that show up, and it's like, can we just not maybe? Uh, yeah. But now we have the second phase of you know going through Gogo's check, which is will the Leprechaun cooperate? And uh, yeah, it sure does. Jealous, very jealous. I was kind of hoping for a left side jump there. That would be so swag. But yeah, I just wanted to confirm that uh, Tybalt did save after doing all the ancient castle stuff, so he only lost that uh, time to the box basically and Uncle Kong almost getting crushed <laughs> by the ceiling there that was close uh Tibble, i think looking for uh, a rage that would cast muddle uh however like Is i'm not even one? sure what's gonna <laughs> i i think so probably uh there's there's rages for all kinds of things but i could not know uh and guess what we're going to oh boy time. Oh no. It's a disaster. <laughs> uh, but Knuckly Kong's got Ice 3, and uh, I, I honestly have not been paying close enough attention to where there were rods for sale. But yeah, uh, required Fanatics Tower, gross. Um, bring in Go Go over Straco. Uh, uh, I. Hmm. It, I mean, is this to mimic rods? Possibly, maybe that's the only thing that I could think of. Uh, but does Knuckle Kong have any rods? He has he's got poison rods. He's got a po yeah, he's got poison rods, but maybe one pearl rod left. Uh, I, I mean, I guess if the top of the tower is Funbaba, then it's fine. But I don't. I mean, I don't know. this needs to be more than just like one rod mimicked. This needs to be a bunch of rods. Uh, you yeah. lose rage, right? You 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 lose everything. So the only commands that you get to keep are uh, magic item and mimic. Okay. So we'll see who the character is here. Uh, it's Locke. That's a real uh, good character. <laughs> that is a uh, a very strange character because uh, it, it it would be oh, it makes, very very tempting for me to do Phoenix Cave. Yeah. Yeah. In, in not the Kong situation, I actually don't hate that because it, it it represents another dragon. So if you were interested in going, I would say that going to three dragons is uh, probably fine here just to pick up the haste. Yeah. 
five. Five you can do. A uh, katana soul being a doll and deciding that uh, flair is the flavor of the day and flaring himself in the face. Uh, this Edgar being awfully tanky, which is very good for Tipple, uh, needs to get through this. That Wind Slash is spooky, though. That's going to be big damage, and uh, Edgar does walk it off. Sword Tech 5 here for Empower. Yeah. Uh, should get back up and running. Uh, and Knuckly Kong is opting... Okay, we're getting Poison Rods on the Dragon. If we are mimicking Rods on the Dragon, what is our plan then for the boss at the top? Is it just Ice 3 and Prey? Uh, I'm going to guess that's got to be what the plan is then. Tibal does get through uh, that Katana Soul. Uh, you yeah, know, by the, the power of Edgar. <laughs> Good on him. Yeah, very well done by Tybalt. Uh, showing the power of, of Sword Tech, really. Uh, Sword Tech is just so versatile. Yeah. And uh, it's cool that the randomizer uh, allows uh, allows the power of it to be showcased more. Because in the vanilla game, the, the Sword Tech charging meter is so slow. Uh, and like it, that is one of the reasons why Cyan is just such a bad character in Vanilla. But uh, in in Worlds Collide, we do buff the speed at which the Sword Tech bar fills, so it's not uh, completely terrible to use. Uh, and Ugly Kong uh, showing a little bit of a of a struggle here against the Storm Dragon, uh, and the Storm Dragon has a deceptive amount of health, so it's going to take another couple of Ice Threes here. My question with this is, is there a save point he can get to here? Or does he have to go back, heal everyone up, and then go to the top? He's going to have, like, if he wants to do that, he's going to have to go back down and save. There are no save points. Okay. Uh, uh, gonna w wins. Miss. And it does. Okay. Good miss because he had just X potioned as well. That would have been relatively tragic. Yeah, uh, that, that would that would have been uh, that would have been rage-inducing, in my opinion. Uh, Tibalt going to go after the Opera House Dragon. This is unseen territory, uncharted waters, if you will, for us. Uh, is opting to equip the Ice Three uh, Esper and the Mag Power Two Esper to people. So unknowing, uh, you know, unbeknownst to him, that will come in handy later down the line. Uh, but we still see, you know. Tibble only in the mid to, to high 20s for levels here. Uh, you know, really just, just having a struggle with things. Cyclonic hitting, and uh, we are now down to, to zero X potions on Knuckly Kong's side. This dragon, uh, maybe a bit more uh, than Knuckly Kong wanted to uh, to bite off on this uh, this check here. Oh, uh, and no. yeah, Arrow says goodbye to Celis, 2400. Yikes. That is very unfortunate. Uh, I believe that he saved outside the tower. Uh, if he did not, if he did not, then that is Tybalt's in. But he, he did. did. So yeah, but he's also uh, you know ten to twelve levels ahead of Tybalt still though. Also up uh, all of Magitek Factory as well still. Uh, Tybalt got introduced to. Uh, to the Skull Dragon uh, putting his party members on the ground. And, uh, yeah. This is yeah. this is where scaling is a problem. In theory, uh, Tybalt can, can, can win this fight. Uh, at this point, I would say that it's just it is better to reset and, and start yes. this fight over. Uh, but um, with, with the fixed dice off Genji Glove offering combo, um, it is possible, uh, given good enough dice rolls, that uh, that Tibble just gets through this no problem. But empower, uh, unfortunately, doing not a thing there. Uh, we get uh, another a large chunk of damage on Saban and Celis there. Uh, this is using a ton of resources and a ton of time on Tybalt's side. Uh, yeah, a Mega Elixir for Nuckly Kong. The Mega Elixir is actually uh, nice in Nuckly Kong's situation, I would say. 
Jumping Imp on uh, Tibalt's side here. Uh, swapping a fixed dice for a Valiant Knife. That is going to do uh, a decent amount of damage here. Uh, the dice rolling better would be helpful to Tibalt's cause. Uh, you know, there that's decent. That's good right there. there. We like that 654. Uh, not quite enough, though. And oh, the, uh, no! <laughs> Edgar decides to drop down. And here is an issue for Knuckly Kong. Uh, Ice 3 ain't going to do it here. My friend, we need to go find Fire Rods. Uh, I think... Um, oh, we have Flare. I we, missed yeah, Flare. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, I think we have Flare. Flare will get it done. It'll take a hot second, but it'll get it done. Yeah, Knuckly Kong. Without that Flare, too, this would have been... Like, you do not get through this uh, without Fire Rods, so... And Tybalt, uh, able to survive, might be getting through this with the, the what'd you yeah, say, I, I, F Figa Bros? Was that the, what you said earlier? The the, the Figa Bros, yeah. The Figa Bros. Uh, and yeah, I, yeah, I think this is going to do it. So okay. uh, good job, Tybalt, for, for making it through this fight. If this coughs up something like an Illumina... It doesn't help for Fanatics Tower, but it's real nice. <laughs> it, it is. It, it's still very nice. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, no Bacchus finds uh, available <laughs> here. Just more just, dice. <laughs> just more dice. The seed really wants you to gamble. Uh, no, the seed is a gambler's fallacy, is what it is. That's fair. <laughs> uh, Tibalt going to Zen. Probably Phoenix Downs, uh, since he's, well, out of them. Uh, and yeah, there's Phoenix Downs. Re up on them, get some potions. Uh, and meanwhile, Knuckly Kong doing battle with this Tritox still. This is, uh, you know, still going to a kind of the theme of the seed, uh, at least on Tybalt's side. Knuckly's, you know, been able to make a much more expeditious work of a lot of these fights. But Knuckly now experiencing basically what Tybalt's been dealing with this entire seed, which is fights just taking forever and three more days. Uh, this is Flare plus Mimic Flare. Gogo, not exactly great, but this is what Knuckly brought him in for, uh, well, was to Mimic. And it's unfortunate, too, because our character is gated here. Like, all of our progression is gated behind this, so Tibble yeah. is going to have to climb this tower, is going to have to Flare this, uh, this Tritok to death, uh, and will probably not be in as good of a position to do it as Knuckly Kong is. Yeah, he'll need... I mean, Tibalt's going to have to do Magitek Factory still uh, and, and get through that. That'll give him some of those levels back, but he's also going to have more checks when he gets into Magitek Factory, which is going to cause potential problems there. It's just going to be real interesting. Also, when he gets to the top of this tower, he's going to have more dragons done at that point. So the whole thing is going to be a bit sketchy. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how Tybalt's able to get through it, but Knuckly Kong still persisting, flaring and mimicking, uh, getting rasp for his efforts, which is, you know, just reflecting. But maybe, uh, maybe Tritok will eventually rasp itself to death. It's probably got like 50,000 MP. I don't know how all this works, but uh, I assume it's a lot. It, it, it is a fair amount. <laughs> uh, I also do not believe that he has the uh, dies when zero MP flag, so... Uh... Uh, Flare is the is the 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 play here, uh, and I, I think he he is almost done. Uh, Tritok uh, at this scaling has uh, probably twenty two ish thousand HP. Yeah, we got to be close. And this is a this is about a dozen flares dumped in. Yeah, there yeah. it is. So Knuckly Kong able to get through. That is the gate on the seed. Uh, where at a billion check scaling doesn't matter anymore because everything is maxed. So, you know, that's that's kind of just party time from here. Uh, Gogo going to get benched almost certainly after this uh, in favor of probably Locke because of his equip pool, but may also opt to, to bring, uh, you know, I think it was Strago that got benched, bring Strago back in. 
Uh, but I, I think that Locke would be a prudent choice here. Give him something because he can equip a ton of good stuff and uh, kind of let him ride as uh, the next party member. Also, can if he's feeling really frisky, go for the weapon shop check. Uh, you know, go for the uh, the Phoenix Cave check. But this is going to be what six characters. He only needs one more Esper, so probably weapon shop. Uh, and that might give him his ninth right there. Uh, just a reminder, he hasn't actually bought to Zen Thief yet. Oh, so he's got Zen Thief on the table still too then, so it doesn't even need yep. to do Weapon Shop. I would do Weapon Shop though, uh, just just to see what it is, because again, if it winds up being like another Valiant Knife or something, uh, yeah. yeah, you just go buy an offering and then uh, wham bam, uh, Locke is figured out. Uh, yeah. Here, I would love I would love to see Phoenix Cave from Knuckle Kong. That would just be phenomenal. Yeah, it'd be interesting with the weapon shop check because if it's an Esper, you can just be like, mm, no, I'm good. Leave it behind and take whatever the item is. Uh, you know, and that, that's something that you don't often get to do. Uh, but we see Tybalt is able to get through. Uh, Ebbets Rock gets Phantom. And we'll see where he goes from there. Knuckly Kong, meanwhile, picking up his lock. Where is he going? Uh, he is locked and loaded and headed over to World of Ruin Narsh. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, Might have been thinking about something else along the way, but we'll see. Uh, maybe. We'll uh, see what he free does here. Heal? Okay, free heal. Um, so my, my guess now is that like he's gonna get this uh and then he's gonna flip and do uh uh south figaro cave which is the faster play for knuckly kong well but... this is this is his oh oh uh was that... right that was an illumina no i would have taken that illumina and gone and spent 50k on an esper from zen uh, give me that Illumina back. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I would. Uh, I think I would agree with that. That's a heck of a choice, though. I respect it, but I don't have to like it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. so Knuckle Kong is done. Uh, I would. I. I. I think that uh, unless he has forgotten. Uh, you could go back to uh, uh, South Figaro World of Ruin and pick up the offering there for Celeste. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't look like he's going to actually do that. So, Nope, he is heading in. I uh, wonder if we'll see the middle and right play where he will go through and stack the parties. No, he is. Uh, he's just giving it a go here. These are... This is an exceptionally risky. These play are low Kong. levels. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so, the, I mean, the final Kafka fight is fine. I'm worried about the statues here because, you know, the fixed ice offering. Sure, that's that's great. We're not at level 42 for Sword Tech Seven or 44 or whatever it is. So, that's spooky. And then where is the rest of our damage coming from? So my, my guess here is that Nakhle Kong is going to shop around that offering and uh, <laughs> what a troll <laughs> egg. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that, that's uh, how it would be. Uh, he's going to shop around the offering and the fixed eye slash the valiant knife to the bosses. Mm -hmm. That will kill them all. But it's like he has no defense and mm -hmm. that is my, my biggest worry for him. Yeah, this is just, this is spooky. Uh, I guess we do have the jumper. Uh, we have Dragonhorn uh, Dragoon Boots, so that is on the table as well. Uh, what's our Lance situation? It's Pearl Lance, right? Do we have an Aura Lance or just a Pearl Lance? I think Knuckle Kong, uh, yeah, Knuckle Kong picked up the Aura Lance from the... Edgar's uh, Throne? Edgar's Throne, was it? that's right. Okay. Yep. Uh, the thing is, is that if this party is the one that fights Poltergeist, uh, Knuckle Kong is in a lot of trouble because Poltergeist has uh, it's it's auto auto safe and auto haste. So 
jumps with a with a normal lance basically don't do anything. Uh, I would not be surprised if the damage here is going to be uh, in the hundreds mm -hmm. and not in the thousands. Edgar could do jumping dice, chat is pointing out. Uh, Nuckly may be going for dragons here to get to three for auto haste, uh, which for me, if that's the case, if we're looking to do more dragons to get to auto haste, I would just take all four people. That's not great. Uh, we have Edgar who is uh, who has been frozen. Uh, do we have fire magic? No, we don't have fire magic in this, uh, this oh. flag set. Uh, Only ice. <laughs> well, flare go go. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately, gonna have to resort to uh, some long animation, low damage uh, spells here. Uh, so only fourteen hundred there. Uh, just from some from the tracker, if this is a dragon's play, Anukli has not done Opera House Dragon. He's only done Ancient Castle Dragon. Mm -hmm. So my guess is that with party three, he is also going to do uh, the dragon on that side too, and that'll give him his three. But yeah, I'm uh, I totally agree with Possum here. I think that if you're going to do those dragons, you stack up your parties and, and just do it that way. Yeah, get the XP on all four people for both the middle and then the boss on the right plus the dragon on the right. Um, you know, your scaling is already maxed up the bosses, so. Why not maximize your gains on your entire party? Not to mention that EXP egg actually becomes relevant. Uh, as much of a meme as it is to get a KT egg, put that on the Sword Tech user, get them to Sword Tech 7, you know, then someone else can be your jumper. Uh, Sword Tech 100%. 7 by itself is a thing. Uh, so there's a lot of ways to handle this, and it, it's just kind of curious to see uh, you know, thankfully the Ice Dragon has no HP. It's, you know, pretty limited in that regard. Uh, Edgar just jumping a couple times and banishing it from existence. But just interesting to see splitting the resources so dramatically when the party could be much more dynamic. And oh boy, wouldn't you know, more fixed ice. Uh, all, all roads lead to Kefka's Casino. <laughs> uh... So fixed ice, fixed ice helps a lot against poltergeist and actually against all of them really. Uh, like it, it, it gets through uh, poltergeist high defenses. It gets through doom's image status, uh, and then the offering will get through uh, uh, love token from goddess. So again, well, I, I think his offense is is fine it's it's his defense that i'm worried about because i think the only thing that he's got is that ice shield yeah ice shield i haven't seen minervas we don't have an umaro to get snow mufflers uh yeah not a whole lot going on for defense so maybe that ice shield from <laughs> fan oh my heavens leader <laughs> just introduced strago to to the pain train 5,300 damage. Get out of my house. <laughs> uh, that is that is the power of scaling plus <laughs> abilities that also have scaling on them. Fortunately, Not no that. counter acts. Uh, yeah, I was worried there. about that. <laughs> but it going back to save, I I totally get that. Uh, chat asking, on a scale of 1 to 10, how likely is it either runner could get total party killed in the next five minutes? Uh, well, Tybalt is Possible for Nuckly. <laughs> uh, possible for Nuckly, yeah. Nuckly is in trouble. Tybalt is also in trouble because Air Force is a very, very rude boss. Uh, but he may have just killed it outright here. Yeah, I think for Nuckly, he's not going to get total party killed because his total party is not combined at the moment. Uh, but any one of these individual parties could certainly explode. Uh, Tybalt's side, meanwhile, yeah. Uh, nah, this this bad. boss is spooky when it has high health. This blue dragon, also spooky. Uh, these dice need to do work. Uh, and ones are not what we need. Uh, that is a good roll there. 4,000, uh, yeah. another 4,000. Better better rolls in the midsection here, but uh, 
So one of the things. Yeah, that's enough. That should be enough. It should be enough. Blue Dragon doesn't have <laughs> a lot of HP, so. Uh, but one of the things with the fixed dice is that you are way more likely to see one through four than you are to see five through six. Mm -hmm. So uh, the fact that Knuckle Kong has rolled as few ones as he has, another oh, my set of goodness. dice. <laughs> is that six? Uh, I think so. Also, Tibble, we didn't see this earlier because of uh, some stream issues. Uh, but Tibble picked up uh, an Atmo weapon. Oh. So Knuckly Kong has access to an Atmo weapon, and huh. now uh, I, I I am all of a sudden very curious. Yeah, because with that Atmo weapon, you just want to jam as many levels as possible on everybody. Because yeah. you and just want did he you right? want levels. He what? also he went right. Knuckly Kong, you are showing us some, like, really forbidden stuff here. <laughs> I, like, I, honestly, I have been doing this for so long that I forget that you can go right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always walk up the middle, go left. And go left. Next person yeah. goes right and goes down and third, you know, party on the right goes mid. Uh, yeah, Knuckly Kong blowing the minds of uh, commentators and uh, viewers alike. It does. It does actually kind of screw some things up, right? Uh, well, yeah. Oh, and yeah. Knuckly that's right. Kong, I, I think, like his party, his party two. I think this is uh, is now fighting this. So, see, I can't. Like, I am so used to going left that I cannot conceive of going right. <laughs> oh. Uh, and chat asking, why is the other way the standard? Uh, I think part of it is because it makes things... Like, it's easy to memorize, right? Uh, when you set up your party for Final Kefka, you have to split it into three. Uh, if you go left um, with, with, uh, with party... What is that? Party one? If you go left with party one, party one fights one boss, party two fights one boss, party three fights three bosses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I part, party for, three. Go I'm ahead, sorry, Jake. I was just going to say, I know from my own experience, I usually stack right the, into group three, and yeah. you have to go right uh, at that point if you want your group three to go up the middle. Yeah, so group three, uh, as you're coming up the right side of Kefka's tower, you know, not including the statue part or anything like that, but your initial drop in, uh, you have party one, party two, and party three. The party on the right, which is party three, that's the only one that has a boss that you fight along the way. So as you then go up to fight that boss, you, brew, you move that party into the middle, and then it fights two more bosses. So you want your two strongest characters, typically, or not two strongest characters, but you want two characters uh, of your four primary ones on the right side. That way you get the most XP for them. You get all three fights with them. It just generally makes things easier, uh, you know, to go ahead and get through. Uh, we also see a bit of an issue here on Knuckly Kong's side. We're running relatively low on healing items. Uh, using a lot to fight these bosses, I'm getting a little uh, a little concerned for our lack of defenses, our lack of Phoenix Downs. We're down to five of them now, uh, and our lack of healing items as we go to the statues and uh, and final Kafka. Also, uh, we didn't see it before because of the issues with Nutley Stream, but that uh, third boss at Magitech facility was Narappa. Okay, uh, Narappa, not a problem, very free. Uh, this Chatter Nook, uh, is, I believe this is at the Guardian spot. So, yeah. uh, Chatter Nook has, it, this is another one of those bosses that always surprised me with how much HP it has. Also, uh, you get to see this fun glitch. Yeah, off screen Edgar dying, coming down, jumping, and then Gigavolt <laughs> ends this fight. And he, this is a problem because we hadn't saved for a while. Because uh, you can't save for a while. The last time we saved was right after leader. So, yeah. uh, gonna have, like, 
not gonna repeat the leader fight, but is gonna have to redo. Uh, Has to the redo dragon the dragon, there. yeah. So rough stuff for Nuckley. Uh, you know, Tibalt has what Kefka at Narsh, Kefka at Narsh, and, and Fanatic's, Fanatic's Tower. Tower. Uh, uh, and with Nuckley's resources, this is uh, so story of of Tibalt's experience last week as well. Uh, he was down by a relative mile to his opponent last week, uh, and his opponent fell victim to uh, some very unfortunate circumstances in the the Kefka climb. The the statues in particular just had their way with his opponent, and it was you know very unfortunate to see. Uh, this is basically a you know barring a disaster, which I hope does not happen to Knuckly. This would be a repeat. If Tybalt is able to somehow, you know, claw back from this, and Nuklicon taking a wipe to the blue dragon there, uh, you know, not the... getting the dice rolls that you really need there. Uh, yeah, and blue dragon is very, very aggressive. Uh, the biggest problem with the blue dragon is that, I mean, all of its attacks are water based, and there is yeah. very little equipment that will block or or absorb water damage. It's uh, what so Minerva I... and what else? <laughs> I don't even think it's Minerva. <laughs> Uh, oh okay <laughs> it's like so the imp equipment absorbs it uh, like the 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 imp imp armor the uh, paladin shield from chat sure the paladin shield does it sure uh one of the suits might do it too i i like it's one of the lesser oh, like a big uh, a moogle or chocobo suit well, or like something. The cho I, I think it's the chocobo suit but that might yeah. just be like poison damage uh, Tibalt does get the skip on the encounters at uh, K and N, so uh, very well done there. Able to time that correctly. The dice are not cooperating with Nuckley all of a sudden. This is uh, a whole lot of ones. Uh, Strago getting bopped. Clean sweep yeah, coming out. Sweep That's gonna going to clean to sweep Saban off the screen. Sure is. Uh, Tibalt getting six for six, uh, doing so Buku damage. I dare say this uh, this race getting interesting all of a sudden. Uh, you know, Knuckly Kong still miles ahead. Uh, he's, you know, probably doesn't know it. Uh, and certainly after what is happening right now is going to he's feel be like... feeling the pressure. Yeah, it, 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 feeling like, oh boy, what is happening? Uh, okay. He's going to skip the blue Ooh. dragon this time. Okay. Wow. And I... I hmm. I... I... I am okay with that, I think. Uh, haste is a really good buff, but... Uh, I, like, if you're Knuckly Kong, you've got to be thinking that Tibble is right on your tail. So, or it, like, if not ahead of him at this point. Right, right. But, but for Knuckly Kong, you know, he had a very clean run up until Kefka's Tower, basically. Yes. Um, and so he rightfully should have felt ahead until this point. Uh, you yeah. know, for for this level of runner, and I'm in this same group basically, uh, where you know this you have A, B, and C rank players on teams, and you know Knuckly Kong, Tibalt, myself, we're all C rank players. And if you're running as clean as Knuckly was up until this point, you should absolutely feel ahead. After what has happened here now, though, the mental starts to change, and this is where it gets very interesting. Uh, you know, will Knuckly be able to compose himself, regain, uh, you know, that earlier form in the seed? Will he also be able to get some of those dice rolls back that have suddenly eluded him? Uh, also, uh, is taking a different party up the middle this time. Uh, we have the dice coming out. Uh, so Knuckly bringing big bad Sabin in here uh, for Chatternook this time. Uh, gonna throw some bones instead of going with that Edgar party. And I think that this is the right play. With any luck, uh, he's going to one-shot the Chatternook here, uh, or at the very least come close to it. The problem right. is that Chatternook, it, it kind of gets two attacks uh, before you can do one, because uh, it gets the Goddess attack. Like, once once Goddess attacks, then it moves into Chatternook, and then once Chatternook appears, it gets an attack. Fortunately, Bolt 3 coming out. Bolt 3 is good because it's reflectable. Yeah. Uh, Gigavolt, good however, roll. is not. So these good are good roll. rolls. 
This cool. should be enough, like just right here to do it. I mean, that's 25k. That's 35. Well, uh, 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 uh <laughs> we're losing the stream, but that should be enough to to take out Chatternook. We did see three ones there, but that's like 35,000 damage in dice there. So, uh, definitely the right play to bring this team in. Uh, and you know, whatever happens from here happens statue wise. But if you can't get through Chatternook to get to the statues, well. It doesn't matter from there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so very important to get the save point here. So now Knuckly is just at the statues, but this is where the final boss of these seeds really are. Not getting the validation chest. So unfortunately, he is going to have to take the forfeit here. <laughs> uh, that's a joke, folks. Don't worry that about is, it. That, yes, Poltergeist, that Poltergeist cooperating brilliantly here. Uh, gets to stop immediately reflected the dice come out the poison rod comes out would love to have seen well you'll uh, i'll need your expertise on this car if we wait trick while stop is applied does that stop the timer from stop running out yes it does and okay, it's very so it's very important to wait trick specifically because uh well for two reasons one it prevents the stop timer from running out uh, and the second reason is that because Poltergeist has auto haste, stop runs out earlier than usual. Mm. So you want to, like, you don't want to be firing off these things willy nilly. It doesn't matter, I don't think. I think this Poltergeist is just dead. Hopefully, for uh, for Knuckly's sake. Uh, and to answer a question from chat, basically, weight tricking is, so you see all these animations happening as uh, Poltergeist goes down, these dice that are firing off over and over and over again. Well, while that's happening, the boss's ATB is filling up. Your other characters are filling up. So if you go into your menu and you go to, let's say, the magic menu or you go to the item menu, you're basically stopping ATB progression on other characters' actions during the animations of your own. So weight tricking is incredibly important. Uh, one of the things that me coming from another game, for example, that doesn't have a real ATB system, uh, didn't understand. Uh, and it was a, a very difficult thing to conceptualize. But once it's explained, it makes a lot of sense that if you can stop time during your animations and make it useful for you to prevent bosses from doing mean and nasty things, why wouldn't you? So that and is weight tricking in a nutshell, at a very low base level. I just wanted to say, in regards to the validation chest, uh, Knuckly did earlier check with Job Dwarf, and it is a haberdasher. Ah, uh, I see. Good joke. Plus plus. Um, so one very important note about the weight trick is that it only works if your battle style is set to wait. If it is set to active, uh, the only thing that you care about is getting off your actions as quickly as possible. Uh, but also, if you're playing on active mode, you are a much braver soul than I. <laughs> uh, Tibalt, meanwhile, seeing that he has Ice 3, uh, he has Bio, he has Flare, he has found the Flare button on one character. <laughs> Uh, okay. Is there ever a world where we just cast Osmos until Tritok dies? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, like, this Ifrit will help a little bit. Flare will help a little bit. Love the Ifrit animations. Fantastic. Hey, 3800. That's, uh, it's fantastic. Uh... So to, to to clarify on what's being asked in chat, uh, you don't you don't open and close the menu like repeatedly. Uh, so basically, while while the die excuse me while the dice are being tossed, for example, you go into say the magic menu or the item menu, and you stay there until the entire like until your entire attack is done. Yeah, and then once it's done, you can get out. Uh, and do something else. There are some menus that it doesn't work on. Uh, maybe the most confusing one is sword tech. Uh, be like, enemies will still get their turn while you're in the sword tech menu. Uh, but for most other things, uh, it, yes, it will pause the timer. 
And also make sure your attack has started before you try weight tricking. I learned that the hard way. The other thing that gets a lot of people too is uh, what, what I call reverse weight tricking, where you hang out in a menu during an enemy's uh, uh, attack. You don't want to do that for the again for the opposite reason why you want to weight trick during your menus. And so interestingly on Knuckly Kong's side here, uh, we have this Doom fight, we've seen a reset, we have Celis using a Valiant Knife here, but we don't have an offering. Uh, I don't know if we'd look to move dice, but I, I have to assume that we have tools here that we are not implementing, which would make this fight a ton easier for Knuckly's uh, case. There's got to be 50,000 health on this Doom, and if we're going 2k a, uh, you know, a shot here, this is going to take forever and a day, and uh, I just I can't imagine this is optimal here uh, you know, on Knuckly's side. So I hope that, you know, if... I hope that either A, he, he figures that out or finds like a really good uh, good rage here, or regathers himself and, you know, kind of looks at his equipment and, you know, gets that offering over to Celis or, you know, gives some dice to Locke. Does something to kind of help out here. The the best thing uh, I think that, that he could do is uh, give Celeste the offering and just, sh just shuffle the offering around uh, yeah. until you kill all the statues. One other thing that he could do is, uh, since Celeste, I believe, has an Ice Shield equipped, uh, she could Rage Daedalos, uh, which casts Merton. Mm. Uh, and I I think that Merton's going to deal more damage than uh, a, a, uh, a zero power Valiant Knife. Right. Uh, especially now, because uh, now uh, Knuckly has to work through the image status here. But meanwhile, Tibble, uh, he's still staring at this Tritok. Yeah, it was fun. We we saw surges uh, basically on Doom. It surged over, and then Tritok cast surge, and so it was really cool to see kind of the waves just continue on from one side to the other. Really loved that. Um, so kudos to the runners for obviously coordinating that. An yeah, hour and 47 minutes in, uh, you know, to this race where they're probably both full-on panicking right now. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> chef's kiss. Uh, that is not what you want to see if you're a Knuckly Kong fan. Uh, that was uh, Doom's Rage, uh, or Demon Rage, to the face, 5,000 damage. Good night, uh... Jim Kite. Uh, yes, I, so the, the scary thing, the very scary thing is that, uh, that was a, a back row. Or excuse yeah. me, that was, <laughs> no, that was, excuse me, that was a front row. Uh, but still, you put it, in, you put her in the back row, uh, now the damage is cut in half, she still dies. Yeah. So we do have the offering. offering. Uh, I think this is going to make... It's going to make it at least a little bit more tolerable, so... We have our 4500 HP uh, Giga Chad Edgar on Tybalt's side reduced to casting uh, Flare. Uh, <laughs> very sad. <laughs> very sad for him, but, uh, you know... Uh, you know, where, where there's a will, there's a way. One of the things about a seed like this, uh, you know, Tybalt probably feels super behind from the early part as we get a double freeze on Nugly's side. That is super unfortunate. Uh, sure I is. would personally just reset there it and go back in. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, one of these, one of the things with seeds like this is, you know, in Tybalt shoes, yes, he's probably feeling, you know, the pains of, of this seed. But also thinking, well, you know, it's a gated Kafka, or gated Fanatic's Tower. You know, that means that my opponent has to deal with it as well. Now, little does he know, his opponent dealt with the rest of the seed to the point that he's at far, far better. So, but until you see that dot done come in, yeah, you, you just, just play know. your game. You just play your game. Tibble, by the way, has an interesting opportunity here because... Uh... I, I believe that he can cast a drain and not have it be completely awful. Hmm. I would like to see him consider healing a little bit so everyone else doesn't die. 
uh, to, to kind of catch this XP. I, I think that he is almost done with this fight, and he's just trying to, to tough it out. That being said, healing is a little more awkward when, you know, it's reflected. <laughs> We have a surge on one side. Oh, no back-to-back uh, -back back surges. Uh, we see roughly, what's that, 5,600 damage come out. Uh, four hits with a Valiant Knife. Force field coming out. Uh, unfortunately, lock is potato lock for Knuckly here. Uh, this is much better. We have 8k damage coming out. Try talk down on Tybalt's side. Uh, Knuckly needs to dodge the targeting into Demon Rage here, uh, but should be through otherwise, doing a lot more damage this time around. Although this I, is I suddenly... think that this attack is going to do it. Yeah, because like, that's that's, that's well okay now. Yeah, VK doing VK things. Yeah. So Knuckly Kong getting through that fight. Uh, now just has to deal with Goddess, who is probably the simplest to deal with, as long as you shuffle the offering around. Yes. Okay, and I'm not sure if you guys caught it. Tybalt checked his menu. He's at 21 checks. So Tybalt has skip online in four checks, because uh, he, he does need 25 for the skip. Uh, so it's still a bit away from that. But dragons... Uh, on the table, toilet. I'm on the table. Lock check. Uh, you know, yeah. he can certainly get to 25 well, easy. Well, and enough. that's interesting too because, oh, well, hang on. So this puts him at 22. Uh, if you wanted to get to 25, he would have to do. Uh, he would have to do one of the uh, dragons in Kefka's tower. Right. Because he's not doing the dragon here. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. <laughs> All right, Knuckly Kong going to show us Goddess here. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the party with Jump. Uh, yeah. This is... It should be really easy money. Goddess has basically no physical defense. So, like, even Gogo's jumps uh, are going to be... Well, his jump is going to be okay. Look at that quad bounce. Look at that. Nice. 20k damage, basically, right off the, the rip there. Gogo oh, has a Pearl the, Lance on. Gogo okay. has a Pearl Lance, so gonna undo <laughs> one of the uh, one of the chumps. Well, thankfully, Gogo would not exist after this clean sweep, so... Go oh, no, oh, he's still low. He's too powerful. Uh, switching to Go -go. dispatch. Uh, it, it is actually a lot more damage for him to do Sword Tech 4 there, but uh, this actually is fine, too. Uh, Maybe. Oh, no, no, this is not fine. This is not fine. Uh, yeah, this is... Bye-bye, Edgar. Uh, so we go again for Knuckly Kong. Uh, Goddess Part 2, uh, minus one uh, Pearl Lance. Here's an interesting thing on Tybalt's side. This is World of Ruin Narsh. So there's dra the Ice Dragon spot, the Tritok spot, and uh, Lox check. Yeah, my guess for Tybalt here is he's going for the dragon, then he's going to do the two in Kefka's tower, get his five dragons for auto-image, and uh, call it good from there. I doubt this is a play at the Tritok check. I think this is just strictly a dragon play. It might be a Tritok play. Uh, I mean, I don't hate it. It's a, it's a bunch of experience for Tybalt. It's another check, and it means that he doesn't have to do uh, that last dragon if he doesn't want to. Mm, true. Uh, Tybalt Raging Ninja here. Uh, Ninja's ability is Water Edge, and Dirt Dragon is weak to water, so uh, good on him for, for learning that, or for figuring that out. Uh, Dirt Dragon should be dead. Uh, there's no way that he survives uh, these big dice rolls. And Edgar only getting a two stack of jumps here. Gogo getting a one stack. And, uh, and then promptly being shot. deleted. <laughs> Poor Gogo. Atma weapon. Well, this is why you never use Gogo. It's because he sucks and he's stupid. Okay. Sorry to that's... any Gogo fans out there. 
That's just hurtful and mean. Well, and uh, there goes I, Goddess. I oh man. Knuckly Kong through the statues uh, will be very interesting to see uh, how he goes about Final Kefka here because his resources are still a little bit sketchy. Uh, I think he only has about five Phoenix Downs. He doesn't have auto haste. He doesn't have auto image. More importantly, he's got like one ice shield. Uh, and we're bringing Gogo back. So now we're down to four Phoenix Downs. This is potentially scary. This is very scary. Uh, as much as I like to say that the, the statues are the real final boss here, like Final Kefka can do any number of just absolutely horrible things to your party. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes there is very little counterplay to those things. And in Knuckly Kong's case, because he doesn't have, like, because his levels aren't great, because his defense uh, just, like, really non-existent, he's going to have a heck of a time trying to get through these fights. Yeah, the, I mean, there's a number of things that can happen. Uh, you know, calmness could be an issue. Tier 2 all over the place can be an issue. We have Mute, which, you know, will come in handy from a time perspective. Maybe stop. Uh, we, I don't think, have calmness if unless we learned Life 3. Uh, Phantom, I guess, as being pointed out in chat, but, like, that Phantom is pretty advanced. Uh, as far as calmness protection is concerned, it's certainly doable with the dice because you just queue up Phantom and then you unload with the dice and you skip Medio phase. Um, but it's it's a little spooky. We also have Celis coming in here at 700 health. Now, granted, I believe she is our VK user, so that makes sense. Saban in the back row taking almost 800 is not inspiring confidence. No, and honestly, the Celeste being at such a low, uh, a low HP threshold, uh, it, like that's terrifying too, uh, because <laughs> counter punches, uh, counter punches, especially because she has the offering, so it's very likely that she's going to wind up targeting the short arm, yeah. and short arm is very very punchy. You can see, you know, you can tell by the way it's curled up into a fist. It wants nothing yeah. more than to punch. <laughs> And here's the issue is, well, now we're down to three Phoenix Downs. Uh, for me, when I'm relying on a VK user, again, I love auto image. Uh, or a much larger stack of Phoenix Downs. Uh, yeah. Or any number of things. Uh, like, this is just so spooky. It, it is very spooky. And, uh, like, Gogo uh, oh, nearly getting one shot there. Yeah, like... And there's an X potion used on Sabin already. Like, yeah, this is just tough stuff. And, uh, like, this is extraordinarily risky. Yeah, because if Celis gets punched here, yeah, you would be without her. Uh, oh. She dodges a punch and a vacuum wave. That is big time from uh, from Knuckly. Another miss on Edgar. Very, really, very really lucky. good dodges. Yeah, phenomenal. So moving on up to tier two. Uh, Knuckly, uh, again, he has Siren. Uh, that's going to take away a lot of the like animation time from Magic not being able to cast his spells. Uh, still going to have to deal with Hit, which is a very serious problem. Yeah, 10 uh, hits is very scary for this team. And, uh, it, uh, also, uh, if uh, Tools uses... Okay, Tools can use Diffusion there, uh, which would probably knock out both Celeste and Gogo. -Go, so... Uh, and then Tiger Head, uh, Tiger Head is Tiger Head. It does all kinds of just rude things. Uh, and we I, just popped our Mega Elixir there. Uh, that, I think that was premature, but like given given Knuckles' item situation, may very well be warranted. What else do we have left for healing on Knuckles' side now? Uh, does he have X potions? He had two. He has zero now. He has zero. And now he has zero... Zero mega elixirs. Uh, and a, another oh, full party north cross. Oh no, this is disastrous for Knuckly here. 
So now I think the play is you hope for uh, like a, fla a flare star to uh, uh, to to hit them, but like this yeah, delta, delta hit, hit is not good. That's... Yeah, this this stinks. And Tybalt, meanwhile, uh, is like he is ready to come in. He's got. Uh... I will say Tybalt did oh, pick up the Illumina. Yeah, yeah, he picked up the Weapon Shop Illumina and has Skip. So, it just he's in a much more uh, commanding position. Also, uh, picked up a second Atma weapon somewhere. Yeah. And he's got double Atma. I mean, it's... It's good. Uh, I also love that animation where it just flies away. Tibalt saying no to the image, though. Tibalt saying, I will keep the three dragons I have, take the haste, and go. And I think that's and, okay. Yeah, I think that's fine in his uh, his situation as well. Uh, yeah, Knuckly Kong getting bodied here by, well, not just Tier 2, but also right. Tier 1. S-Cross will thaw them, but it might also just kill them. Uh, okay, maybe not. Uh, ice Shields, perhaps? Uh, I guess he has more than one, and that's a very lucky Delta hit. <laughs> yep, that's a 1 in 3 that he needed to go his way. And Tiger is down now, so... And Celis is back and uh, slapping things. Life 3 on magic, and this is why... This is why you always mute magic. Uh... Are we... Do we not have, like, a soft or anything? We might not. Uh, meanwhile, on Tybalt's side, there was a charm that came out, and Sabin put some dice into Strago. But now the dice are going into Chatternook, so that's what you want to see. Uh, and I've seen some big rolls here, too. So uh, I I am hopeful that it is dead. It should, yeah. it, it should be dead. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. heavens, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that'll, that'll, that'll... Wow, that'll okay. So. Save some of those, friend. Yeah. <laughs> so, think... Knuckle Kong's still in the lead, but that lead has very rapidly dwindled, especially with this Tier 2 being as rude as it is. Yeah, and lose... No, we do have a soft. Okay, there we go. Sabin back at it. Reflect comes up, but Reflect doesn't actually do anything most of the time. Uh, Strago is not healed at all. Does he have a VK? Oh, Stunner. Well, unfortunately... <laughs> Strago... I, so, I did see Stop uh, on one of these Espers, but... Uh... This I is Tibble's rough. Just this gonna, is... I, yeah, I think Tibble's just going to hope that these dice are going to do it, and I don't think they are. No, they're very not. These uh, last few rolls, though, are pretty good. Real rough, though, because also Poltergeist is just going to act again right after those dice. So uh, Tibble needs a second set to kill, or else uh, he's going to fall. Oh, I lied. Oh. He's just going to fall over first. Okay. Yeah, I think the target <laughs> uh, Southern Cross is just extremely deadly. Yeah. So the thing for Knuckly Kong is that uh, if Merton comes out, he might be in a pickle. I mean, even if W Wind comes out, he's in a bit of a pickle. That's true. Because anything on the back of that is incredibly dangerous. He has to time uh, Tier 3 to where he one shots with dice and while that should happen with eight dice tosses he doesn't it's... have eight dice tosses though he's got his offering still on celeste with that valiant knife oh so in order for that like it he, he can so still he's got to get close he's but... got to get down to like 5, 12 to 15k which opens up the door for more counters on the way and yeah so yeah. that the, those swings there did about 16k so uh 
if you can get him to about 20, like to 25,000 or down 25,000 HP, should yeah. be okay. So cl- but yeah, Martin is real spooky now because three people are in range. Uh, and I don't even know if we have three Phoenix Downs left. Well, I, I don't know what, <laughs> what sort of uh, like fire protection they've got. So, like, there's at there's least one ice, ice shield. shield. <laughs> but like, both Celeste, Gogo, and Sabin, I think, uh, live to uh, uh, survive a. Uh, 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 oh, what is this? this? Is... Okay, so this has to miss. It does That's not. It, not it hit the wrong ideal. People. And so let's put that sap too. That's really unfortunate. So Edgar's gonna be fine. Edgar has uh, Sword Tech 5 to recover. And so does Gogo too, but Gogo sucks, so it's whatever. <laughs> Alright, we have an elixir coming out on Sabin here. Down to the Phoenix, last Phoenix down, down on Edgar. Uh, Tibalt is through Poltergeist. Uh, this is very dangerous. This needs to kill. Uh, it does not. So we have to hope not Medio here. Or if yeah. we get a Medio, that it doesn't hit anybody. Because it's coming out like right now. Yeah, this he needs to go and kill. Yeah, before... And even then, what was our calmness protection? Was it just prayer? I, I, yeah, I think it was just hope, hope that the right person didn't get... Uh... So now we need to dodge more Medio. Yep. Uh, uh, Celis did not dodge. Celeste. Oh, okay. Oh, she did dodge. It just missed. Okay, well, we're through. That is Celeste gone. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the brothers go to final Kefka... Tier 4 alone, blinded, uh, one of them jumping, one of them throwing dice, gambling their way. Uh... This is, yeah, <laughs> I, I really do not like this because I have had so many seeds where uh, the dice just do not roll yeah. the numbers that I need them to, and it, it counter, like it triggers an ultimate counter, and I just wipe. Yeah. So Edgar jumping, like that's still a good source of damage and a relatively safe one too. But like, is it going to be enough? I mean, thankfully the blind status doesn't matter with dice and with jumping. Uh, we have one elixir left. Uh, Tibble eating a, uh, a hyperdrive there, uh, courtesy of Goddess. Uh, there's fallen one. Okay, so those are pretty decent rolls. And, uh, yeah, we're doing... So that's uh, about 20k, and Sabin is down. Do we have a Phoenix down? We have one. So... The problem is that it... Ooh, I, I think... I, I think that's a, that that's gonna wrap it up for Knuckly here. I mean, maybe Jumping Edgar can just avoid everything. Jumping Edgar has like you have to time it right in order to get out of the gunner. Well, uh, I think that was too early. That's early, yeah. No, okay. okay. So now we have to hope that he doesn't get half queen. Revenger's great. Okay. Dodges train, the train and the Havoc dodges wing. the Havoc Wing. Okay. Do we, we believe get, we in miracles? Oh, okay. If this doesn't kill... This is spooky if this doesn't kill, because it doesn't split damage at this point. Nope. Oh. Okay. Does Edgar survive? Put your survive? dodging pants on. Uh, Put them on, Edgar. A, a single rolled gunner. He does! He does! Oh! Come but on, this, Knuckly! This has to do it, though. Oh, no. 
Oh, I mean, Train's fine. Train's fine. The follow-up Havoc Wing is not fine. Is no! Not. Oh, no. Knuckly. Oh. Heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. And the thing is, is that he was very close to dying. I wasn't counting the damage, but... Uh, no, it was extremely close. It, like, uh, one more jump would have done it. And it, like, it, even a two-bounce jump would have been fine. Uh, Tibalt in his menu trying to figure out things that are not Atma weapons to equip because he is taking a lot of damage. Uh, at this point, pretty much anything would be fine. Fixed ice seem like a real good option since we have a billion op uh, billion fixed ice. Uh, hopefully rolls better than uh, ones, twos, and threes, or just continues to roll ones, twos, and threes, and ones, twos, and threes, and ones, twos, and threes, and, and one, two, and two. Twos. All right. Well, those are uninspiring dice rolls. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was terrible. Uh, well, he's gonna get another crack at it, though. If he if he gets better luck here, uh, no, 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 no. Oh, he is he playing it safe and using uh, an elixir? Okay. I think so. I personally would have just swung for the fences there because yeah, I'm a bit I of a maniac like that. Did. But <laughs> uh, now, I think that Tibble survives a, a, a demon rage if he doesn't kill here, but that's a good start. Yes, very good. That's another good follow-up. That's 15k. That That's, that's not 86. good. That's 86. That's, you know. <laughs> uh, reverse polarity, starting out for Knuckly Kong on attempt number two of uh, his final Kefka fight. Uh, this is pretty awkward. Uh, Tibalt does get through Doom, so I believe that is all three statues for Tibal, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I, I think you're right. Uh, so Knuckly Kong also shuffled the uh, that offering back over to Saban, so gonna be able to octo-fix dice. The big problem with that uh, is twofold. One, the animation time per dice is very long, and two, the damage is very, very inconsistent. Yeah. But it's a lot of damage. <laughs> it is a lot of damage. Uh, now, is that Saban still in the front row from the ver reverse polarity? Uh, it looks it like looks it. looks yes. like it. So he needs to get him back in the back row. Because uh, he, he's going to get bopped here. He could get crit and die here straight up. Or just not have a counter. Uh, That's cool, too. Right. <laughs> Knuckly Kong tempting fate. Goodness. I mean, this seed is all about gambling, right? Uh, Tibble, meanwhile. Oh, Tibble uh, not through all three statues. Okay. Doubling up on the fixed dice. Now, again, uh, it's easy to forget, but there's really good rages here, right? So Gold Bear will multiply each of those dice rolls by 2.5. How does Gold Bear cooperate with Goddess, though? Uh, I mean, as long as Celeste doesn't die, it should be fine, because she has the uh, Genji Glove offering, so, like, she won't be affected by Love Token. Okay, that was uh, my it, question, was RE a Love Token? Yeah, like, it, it would just straight up be a damage upgrade here. Okay. Uh, so we have some dice coming out on Knuckly's side. Big numbers. Ooh, Love to see that. Big numbers on Tybalt's side, too. Uh, unfortunately, not big enough, so gonna have to take another turn here. I don't know that I'd even bother pummeling here, because it could just invoke counters that would be not good, uh, and just leverage the dice. Uh, yeah, 100%. Uh, Celis down on Knuckly side. You do get the mute coming out on magic, so that's going to save some time. Uh, some jumps coming out from Edgar. Phoenix down coming out. Uh, so again, limited resources, but Celis is a big part of the damage equation here. Unfortunately, uh, she is 
Nope, she dodges to freeze. Okay. That's pretty good. Unfortunately, single swinging uh, is not nearly as good as uh, quad swinging or octo swinging. So, yeah, uh, potential damage output is is lower. Uh, oh, hey, how about a desperation attack? Sounds good to me. Always hate getting that when you have an offering on someone though with a VK. It's like, can we not? You just cut my damage like in half in a quarter. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> in, in this case, it actually was uh, a, a bit of a buff. I, I think yes. she's doing about 6k a swing, so now it's closer yeah. to like that was about nine plus way better animation. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'm 10 to... hits. This is bad. Go goes oh, down, Celis Go -Go. is almost certainly down. He says, as only Sabin takes 19 punches to the face. Nope, there goes Celis. Uh, this is rough. Edgar never got touched there. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, this also means I think we're going to progress through tier two here, down Celis and Gogo. I think uh, it's, it's going to be the sure brothers. Like yeah, the brothers heading into uh, oopsie calmness land uh, all, all by themselves. Uh, meanwhile, Tybalt is getting to final Kefka. Uh, boy, somehow we have a race on our hands. <laughs> yeah, uh, for as big of a, of a lead as Knuckly Kong had, wiping on final Kefka really did uh, a lot to equalize that. Combined with Tybalt getting the skip. Yeah. Uh, and Tibble, Tibble has uh, a party that is higher in levels and also has better weaponry in general. Yes. And so, has auto haste. Uh, yeah, this this is surprisingly close, especially because Nuclecon has a very real chance of taking another reset here. Mm -hmm. That is not what you want to and, see. I mean, that's probably better than Merton, but that's not what you want to see to start out, especially, especially hitting both of them. Ooh, yeah, no, that's rough. Uh, he does have four elixirs, okay, uh, that's good. And, and I think he saved that mega, so... Oh, this is interesting, though. Opening with the dice right away and the jump, uh, anything can happen here. <laughs> oh, but he did waste an elixir. Uh, on an Edgar who who jumped before it went off. Yeah. Oh, this is this is scary. We got a punch counter. That's the best counter. There's Medio though. That is that, not yeah, good because both the brothers don't dodge and uh oh no save and dodged okay save and dodges but revivify the boss get it out of medio range something gar taught me and restabilize uh yeah but, but this mm. uh... this is probably it this is probably like you need to revive here yeah uh And so to answer a question from chat, RE fixed dice, uh, and we'll get to that in just a second. Unfortunately, Knuckly Kong down just one more like time. That, Tibble's in the lead. Uh, Knuckly Kong has been ahead in this race for over two hours. Uh, Tibble, for the first time, basically this entire seed uh, is in the lead. Uh, but getting back to the whole fixed dice conversation, the way that it works is fixed dice. Uh, basically, when you fight, they will roll three. And that's just, you know, one through six on three different dice. With a Genji Glove, you can put on two of them. With an Offering, that means they each attacked four times. So it ends up being eight attacks total of three dice. So 24 total dice. Now, on Tybalt's side, we do have a bit of a, a, bit of a problem here. Uh, Sabin decided that he felt a little tired and wanted to take a nap after tier one. Uh, that's not great. That doesn't uh, mean that he is going to be left behind. So a quick question for me is, could you explain the Revivify thing? Of course. So the Revivify basically works where the the boss has 40,000 HP. Uh, the uh, What's the, the boss's name there? It's Lady and what? Uh, rest. 
Rest, there you go. So Rest has 40,000 HP. But if you revivify it, it will heal it for one-eighth of its health. And it will only Meteo under, I want to say it's 10,000 HP left. So if you revivify it back out of the 10,000 HP range, it will stop Meteoing. And that can allow you time to recover. Now it can still do other nasty things, but it will stop a Meteo spamming you. So it can be a way to stabilize when things go completely off the rails. Uh, something that Gar taught me. Wonderful teacher of this game. Thank you again, my co-commentator. Uh, absolutely Anytime. wonderful human being and great teacher of this game. But that revivify trick is enormous. Now, you it is possible that you can take it uh, to a, a, a risky territory and not have it be bad. So, uh, if you're down to one character... Uh, I, I would say that it's actually tough to revivify because, one, uh, you may not actually get it out of Meteo phase. Mm -hmm. And two, if you do, there's always the chance that it uses just a regular physical attack on you and kills you anyway. So it may actually be better when you have one character to, uh, to Phoenix down somebody and then hope that Meteo misses on a roll. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really tough. It's kind of caught in, in between, you know, a rock and a hard place. Uh, and so we see, uh, meanwhile on Tybalt's side though, we're down that Sabin, uh, we see a flare star coming out, uh, but it is split across all four party members. Uh, nobody falls down. Doom Tusk though, that is gonna turn Strago into a zombie. Uh, and everyone has actions queued up. So this is a bit spooky because Strago, who knows what he's going to decide to do at this point. Uh, and it was punch and poison lock. A little unfortunate. Uh, and this is th this just goes to show you the importance of weight tricking. Yeah. Uh, you, you, like, you always want to have somebody just waiting in the wings, not doing anything. Which for Tybalt and myself as well, coming from you know Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise, where you always want to be jamming the queue full of as many actions as possible, it's a very hard thing to get away from. I oh, know absolutely. for yourself, Gar, you learning free you know Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise, it's Do not the same thing. Rough. Yeah, uh, Knuckly Kong taking a reset, lost Gogo -Go and Sabin. Uh, and uh, that is that is another attempt incoming for Knuckly Kong here. Uh, just a very rough go of things here in the, the final few attempts. We got, was that an, oh, that was Mantra. I thought for a minute there was an X-Zone cast from a zombie coming out on Tybalt's side. I was very scared. <laughs> that would be rude. Fortunately, <laughs> that can only happen if you queue up an X-Zone and then while it's in the queue, you get zombied. Uh, otherwise, God. zombies will just use the fight <laughs> command. Ten hits comes out. Everybody lives. Uh, I think that... Uh, I think that Edgar is in the back row, so that's why those Apple weapons aren't doing as much damage as they could be. Yeah, Illumina in the back row is great. Uh, would love to see weight tricking here from Tibalt while that pearl is coming out from the Illumina, but uh, you it, know, still making it decent really progress. Here because like uh, uh, Magic can do literally nothing until he dies. That's true because he's muted and now he's dead. Did we not get quarter or dispel counters there? Uh, we got one dispel, so wow. uh, his death nice. counter is uh, zero to one quarter, and then zero to two dispels. Uh, anytime you get nothing when he dies is that's a it's a good C. And on to tier three for Tybalt. He's got three of his four primary characters kicking around here. He did lose that Sabin, but otherwise in a good spot. Big dice rolls coming out here from Knuckly Kong. Uh, the head is certainly dead here. Uh, if the arm goes with it, that could be a little spooky. That is also awful. Uh, Sabin down. Yeah, that's that's really unfortunate. 
Um, and oh, right on to the next phase, Sabin gone again. And that, like, that's why defense is so important for 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 tier one. It's it's just tier one is just an armor check. Uh, but if you're relying on something like uh, uh, offering to do your damage, you have to know that it's not targetable, and you have to be really, really careful right. in order to just not die. Normally, like if I have a fixed dice offering character, I normally don't even attack on tier one because the the chances that um, short arm crits or short arm counters and hits you and kills you, and then you move up to the, the next tier. And Tybalt needs to be careful here. Because this could be out. train into Medio. Oh, is going to dim timer. So yeah, Cell is going to die. But he queued up a Phoenix down with lock on her. Oh, but that's a really big roll. Okay. Uh, blinded Edgar. Yeah, this is this is spooky. <laughs> Yeah, we need a we need a lot of misses here, and we well we, those we were the get, misses on the right. Characters. We get appropriate ones, so fortune favoring the Tybalt here, and that's another big roll. So there's that's the big enough. Celis dodges and... only one, and Tybalt is on his way through to tier four. And now we see a, a second glimpse at final Kefka, but this time on Tybalt's screen, so. Uh, uh, and, and, and double is, freeze on Knuckly's side. Uh, if, if Tybalt if Tybalt dies here, Knuckly Kong once again retakes the lead. Yeah. And I don't know what Tybalt's healing situation is like. He's been relying on a lot of mantra, but this is also a poison block who is going to die as soon as that poison ticks. Uh, Celis and Strago are not in a comfortable place either, so uh, really need to... Uh, to see what we have. Okay, the poison ticked and locked didn't die. We so, have a couple of elixirs. And we have we do have, we have a mega. mega. Okay. So uh, the way the poison works is that it, it deals ever increasing damage. Uh, like uh, I think it ticks up eight times, and then after the eighth tick, it just stays there. Oh, so it's like toxic from Pokemon. A little bit, yeah. Perfect. See, uh, I just need to understand it in things I get. <laughs> uh, and and every time every time you go up a tier, it resets uh, that poison counter value. Uh, that was a a, a fantastically timed uh, elixir there. Oof. Immediate poison tick after. Uh, now this is where uh, this is how uh, uh, forty five hundred to lock. This is something that uh, I have seen Tibalt struggle with before. Is just going ham. On, on Final Kefka, because in the Zeromus fight in Final Fantasy IV, which he's familiar with, that's all you want to do is push, push, push damage. And you can't but do that here. You, yeah, you absolutely cannot because you will die. Uh, and so this is where Tibalt can get himself into trouble. Here's a hyperdrive, there was a physical counter, you know, and now all of a sudden we're down to two people, we're cracking shields, we're pushing, swinging for the fences, and this is real spooky. There's an ultimate counter. Uh, thankfully, we have 7,000 health, so like... They'll both live. Edgar's gonna live. Celis probably lives. And now... Uh, okay, so okay. I, think, I think that he's got it. Yeah, he just need. Now is when he needs to push. Oh, that... Oh, no, 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 no! You attack, attack, attack! <laughs> go, 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 go! I think that's gonna do it. I think that does it. And Tibble. crack pal for Tibble. Wow. 228.51. What a what a treat of a seed that was. Uh at, at times upwards of what 20 to 30 minutes behind. Yes. Uh comes back from the dead. And uh Tibble, against all odds captures uh, another victory for Team Doomgaze. Uh, moving hey, them... That's going to move are them they up another, another rung. And Team Inferno, are unfortunately... Are they still undefeated? I think so. Yeah. Um, 
incredible. <laughs> and yeah, I, I said earlier that uh, I didn't think that there was any way that Tibble could come back, and uh, he proved me wrong. What a what a fantastic just show of force there. Uh, really, again, it just goes to show you the power of Skip, the power of having those levels, and the power of like having all of those weapons that that yeah. Donkey Kong never found. Well, like, Knuckly found early power, but it was all via dice. Tybalt found power later, uh, multiple Atma weapons. He found, uh, you know, the, the Illumina from the weapon shop uh, instead of taking the Esper. So, you know, was just able to pick up a lot in the way of late power, which was able to get him through the statues better, which was able to get him through, you know, Kefka better, or final Kefka better. Uh, we see Knuckly Kong on tier three here is down to just edgar uh, and we are joined by tybalt uh gg to you sir turn mic on uh ggs yeah fantastic show of force there uh, uh like that was that was honestly a, a really amazing seed uh to, to watch and uh I, this is one of the ones that i'm definitely going to re-watch because this one was just fantastic so ggs on that uh, first place victory thank you uh i rough early game and then i find a fixed dice and i'm like all right we can start somewhere and as i'm going through the seat i'm like where are all my characters i've already done one dragon i can't berserk myself for fanatics tower so i i do want to ask about that early game because I, you went into World of Ruin South Figaro, you went into that relic shop, and you saw, like, you, you had picked up the Dragoon Boots in World of Balance South Figaro, you saw the offering, you saw the Dragon Horn, uh, but you didn't oh, pick any I, of it up. I missed the Dragon Horn offering in shops then. I did oh. not see those. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That explains. That would do it. Yep. Uh, a good bit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like the one relic I remember seeing in a shop was the Genji glove in Narsh. I committed that one to memory, but I never saw an offering. Or I mean, I think I saw. I think I picked up Dragoon boots, but I never saw an offering in a shop, which is why I was hunting trap chests so much for the Katana Soul. That's true, and that was also like a very, very spooky uh, Katana Soul. Was there ever a point where? You consider just bailing out of it because yeah, uh, it was the, gonna... the last option was me going to be doing the ancient castle trap chest. Anything beyond that, like I didn't have sets or no way I'm going to check the trap chest in floating continent. Like maybe sets or something. I'm still looking for characters, but not even going over to uh, belt cave for that one. I'm not going to go out of my way that far. Maybe Narsh. I forgot about that one, but. At that point, I already checked a bunch. It was it was getting down there to what traps were left. But I didn't want to go too far out of my way. And I yeah, didn't even get to use it in the, in the Kefka fight because Saban died. Yeah. Uh, that was also a problem that Knuckle A. Kong had as well, though. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't feel too bad about that. Um, the, the other thing that I noticed that I thought was uh, kind of unusual was that uh, when, like, pretty early in the seed, you went to... Uh, uh, Phantom Train, and you found the Ice Shield there, and like, so personally, I would have reset out of that, uh, but you persisted, and I think that Ice Shield actually uh, paid for itself many times over, so like, what was going through your head as you did that check? I really hadn't picked up much for armor at all, so like, nothing in the high tier armor, no force armor, no force shields. No Minervas, no like anything really good, no Moogle suits even. So I was like, Ice Shield's like, cool, it's something better than nothing. I've got a hard gate with either Air Force sitting at Magi Magitech Factory or whatever's going to be thrown my way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that's my other thing too. Uh, did you feel like incredibly far behind once you because you i think you reset out of you reset out of air force yeah uh, out of air and, force out of number you, uh number 24 in ancient castle or in uh figaro castle i felt so far behind like i was miles behind and then it comes down to last location in lock at fanatics tower 
with Tri Talk. That's that's funny too. I was watching Awesome Morpheus play it earlier, and I, he had like two seeds that were both character gated at mm -hmm. Fanatics Tower, and on Doom seeds, th those are really bad breaks because your magic is just in general it's so weak. Yeah, and so limited. I only had one character with flair, and I didn't have an esper to teach it. So he got flair somehow. I'm not exactly sure how, but he had flair, and I'm like, okay, this is this is how we're gonna get through this fight slowly but surely. Uh, I think I have to apologize for that because I think very early on I asked Gar if it would be worth it to check Fanax Tower, and I'm pretty sure that's what jinxed it. Oh, early, early <laughs> on, Fanatic Star, before doing a dragon, you've got Berserks, so you can Berserk your party up to utilize your fixed dice, your Illumina. So you have that option, but when you have one dragon done, you get that auto-reflect, and that strat just goes right out the window. And so that's going to be a last location in this flag set. It, it's certainly one that I would consider to be a last location as well. Uh, I guess it does kind of depend on what you pick up, but... Yeah, in general, again, because your magic is so weak, uh, you're not really considering Fanatic's Tower uh, up until the point where you absolutely have to. So, yeah, hard to blame anybody for last locationing it. But yeah, unfortunately, that was where all the progression was. So, and, and, and Fixed Dice being the MVP for taking out the statues. <laughs> There were like six of them the, throughout the entire scene. I, like, I, th it really wanted you to gamble. Right, I found three of them, and I, ma I made sure that my party could at least have the option of fixed dice, and I had the offering, so I had Goddess Protection right there. Yeah, oh, that was one of the things that I made a note of too. Is that like, uh, for for both you and Ugly Kong, your offense was going to be generally fine right because you've got offering and fixed dice you'll get through anything uh, mm -hmm. even if it takes a couple of tries but uh the defense especially on knuckley's side was almost non-existent so uh, oh, that, yeah. that, like it was it was scary uh to watch that happen but oh it's like back row 3k what <laughs> huh you hit me for 3k in the back row with a physical mm -hmm. ow <laughs> it's the power of the scaling in this flag set yeah. Well, I think that's about all that I've got. Possum, uh, what do you have for Tibble? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, he he played his game uh, slowly but surely got there. You know, definitely a case of uh, Tortoise versus the Hare, if you will. And uh, Tortoise got there in the end on this one. Uh, I know that, you know, this is kind of becoming Tibalt's thing. Two races in, two very similar situations. Uh, very slow starts, able to capitalize on, uh, you know, opponents having bad luck or trying to push too hard or whatever it may be, and Tibal just kind of sticking to his guns. So not a lot really in the way of questions, just been real interesting to watch his races so far. Yeah, it does make for great entertainment on the part of our viewers. So uh, th th first of all, thank you very much for uh, appearing to be on the, the restream. That's really cool. Uh, and thanks for putting on such a great show for us. Oh, not a problem. We couldn't put the show on without the commentators and the restreamers. You know, we may be racing, but you actually put knowledge to what we're doing. So, always a pleasure. I do enjoy watching these back, so I'll, I'll enjoy some heckling here and there, as I know uh, you too well. <laughs> <laughs> nope, that would that would never happen. I, I did a little <laughs> bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, uh, Tibble, uh, any any final memes for us here? No. Uh, th you know, thanks again. Uh, shout out to Possum and Gar for doing the comments and Joker Mage for you know restreaming and tracking. It's uh, always a pleasure, and we'll see if I can keep the streak going. I doubt it, but we'll see. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, again for for being on here. Uh, Grats once again on your first place uh, win here. Uh, and I do believe that it is going to make Team Doomgaze 2-0 uh, so far. Is that right? I'm not 100% sure on that. I I haven't uh, seen my, one of my teammates play yet, so we'll have to see. Fair enough. I know we're 3-0 in the first round, so if we, we'll we see if we can keep it going. Uh, I think yeah. PB&J won his match earlier, and it's just Honey versus Ensign Wesley to go. Yeah, that is correct. So y'all are 5-0. 
individually and two and zero basically as a team so far. So, really heckin' good job to y'all. Thank you. GGs and uh, have a good night. Good night, Tibble. Good night, GGs. Okay. Well, uh, I do not believe that Knuckly Kong is going to uh, get on here for an interview. So, uh, that I think is going to wrap up our stream for the evening. Uh, thank you so much to Speed Gaming for hosting us as always. Uh, it is a pleasure. Uh, thank you to Joker Mage for uh, for two things: one for tracking, and two for agreeing to give up your uh, commentary spot so I can do it with Possum Morpheus, who is just such a wonderful human being uh, and is teaching me so many things about free enterprise. So, uh, as much knowledge as I've given him for Worlds Collide, he's given me just as much, if not more, for Enterprise. So, uh, thank you both very, very much for being my combo crew uh, and. Uh, of course, the Schwanz 27, who is not in here, but is also a certified gangster. Yeah, thank you all. It's been a pleasure. It's my, my first time on comms for Worlds Collide. Definitely hope to do it again. And uh, yeah, thank you, Joker. Thank you, Gar. Thank you, uh, Schwanz. And uh, yeah, thanks, Speed Gaming. And GG's again to Tibalt and Knuckly. Hey, Joker Mage, you got anything for us before we head out of here? Uh, just uh, if you liked what you see, we have a website, we have a Discord. You should uh, come and join and get involved. We have this uh, still going on for another four weeks, and plus, uh, at least that's the group stage, and there's going to be a knockout stage after that. And after that, I'm assuming we're going to have some other event, and we always have other just other stuff going on, like live seeds, multi worlds, seeds of the week, all sorts of stuff is going on. I think there was another tournament that. Uh, both of our commentators were involved in and got into the finals for recently, uh, if I read the news right. But yeah, there's plenty uh, to do. And so definitely get on the website, get on Discord and come join us. Could not possibly agree more. Okay, well, that is going to do it for us here. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, you have a great day.